Welcome to Achila Yona's School of Yona series on YouTube. Be sure to check out my book, Discovering Genealogy, my Patreon account, and also check out my podcast. Now since the introduction is over, let's get it cracking. Hello everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? I did not go live yesterday because I was super exhausted, okay? And I'm going to tell you all right now, I'm not going to be doing lives for a while or at least at night to this extent. So, um, so yeah, because I, I know with some of y'all guys, it's kind of hard trying to keep up with the lives at night. Yeah, it was hard for me to keep up with the lives at night. but um. But the show must go on, and I wanted to do a live before I just kind of not do them as often as I usually do, because um, I'm going to get to the point where I'm just going to upload videos and not um, go live for a minute. But I will still premiere my videos, though, so we can all watch them together, and I can show up in my comment section showing out, okay? And, um, <laughs> you know, and just for a second, I have to talk about the more video because the more video was out of this world. Like I was expecting people to be in their feelings. But when I read the comment section, it is it's just it's hilarious. It is it's hilarious to me. Like. <laughs> like I have I, I mean, hey folks gonna be mad, right? You know, and this is why research is so important. And we just can't allow people just to say stuff to us and word salad us and say, oh, well, it's such a such. And of course, you know, what a lot of um, you melanated Aboriginal American people, I see a lot of our people just kind of go along with things if it sounds right. Okay, like if it sounds right, they like, yeah, 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 that sounds good. Um, that sounds about right, but just because it sounds about right doesn't mean it is right. Okay, and that's why it's important for us to do our research. Because if you don't do your research, then, you know, you, you leave yourself open to deceit. Helito, everyone. Helito to the chat. So, it's this person that I have did content on before. I don't really know him. Um, I, I think, oh yeah, me and Young Noble went over um, one of his videos before. And I think it has something to do with like, pan-africanism and stuff like that but um the i k y g i know your game okay he has like his own website and stuff and i mean i don't know i don't really know much about him but i was surprised when i came across this picture i was like okay oh, i see him with the dashiki i should have put on i should have put the dashiki of him <laughs> that's the thumbnail <laughs> I should have done that. But I was like, yeah, you know, because with me, I I don't care. I'm I try not to be super petty like I usually am. It's it's kind of hard not to, but I I just don't feel the need to constantly disrespect people because we have a difference of opinions. But in this fact, but in this instance, it's it's difference of truth. Okay. And our truth is going to be different from Africans' truth, Australians' truth, so on and so forth. Our truth is different. So I hate it when people try to put us in the melting pot and say, oh, well, you know, we're all the same because of the out of Africa theory. Mind you, that the out of Africa theory was created by white supremacists. And, you know, and Africans like to say, oh, well, you know, if it was meant to make fun of us, then why were they crediting Africans um, as the original people? But the thing is, we know how pale people 
play. We know how they get down. They will sit here and make you feel like you are the number one person. You are top dog. You are the first and foremost everything. But they're going to add their own BS to it. Because Africans will sit here and say, oh, yeah, we, we the first and we this down the third. But then when you start bringing up apes and monkeys, and they'll be like, oh, well, I don't believe in that. Why? You over here pushing out Africa theory on people, but yet you don't believe the very thing that they say that we all descend from? That don't make any sense. How are you going to believe in the out of Africa theory, but you don't believe in Lucy? And even for the ones that do believe in Lucy, like, y'all don't see how that hurts your image as a humelinated person? To say that you come from monkeys and apes and stuff like that. But yet, if a pale person was on the street to call you an ape, then you'd be like, oh, this is racism. Well, it's still racism when Charles Darwin said y'all come from apes. So what's the difference? Why the selective outrage? Hello, Mr. Smith. Yes, 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 yes. Please be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. Do you know I want to miss my content, baby? Okay. So I'm debating whether or not to play this video. I may actually just let y'all see the video for yourself. Because, yeah, at this point, I, I really just, I was just going to let y'all listen to it. But <sighs> yeah, I may, I may let y'all watch it. Because at this point, I, I just don't give two Fs. <laughs> I really don't because I usually I just let y'all listen to it because I like oh well you know I don't want to get copyrighted but I, I really don't care because I can always redo this video it, it makes me know never mind so yes um so yeah but this man he has been going on a rant for years and I've been seeing his videos go back to like 2019 talking about us not being indigenous, how we're not from America. And child, it's like literally the same thing that he said in his video. Okay. Like it's the very same thing he claimed that um that that he claims like, oh well, I, I have proof that they ain't indigenous. You know, I have proof that African Americans ain't indigenous and this, that, and the third. And y'all can already tell. You can already tell where, where he's going to go with this. <laughs> I just heard my grandfather's cousin say today that we are Native Indian. And she remembers her mother saying, what are they going to choose, Black or Indian, for the census? Yeah. Definitely. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that day, Yalba. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. But thank you so much for joining me tonight. I know it's late. I'm sorry if I'm smacking a little bit. I'm trying to drink coffee so I'm not like on this live. Because as y'all know, sometimes on my live, I'll be falling asleep. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I'll be over here reading. And it'd be like four in the morning <laughs> trying to read this blog. And I can feel myself falling asleep. And I'm like, huh? My words start slurring. I know y'all put like, can this heifer not read no more? And I'm like, child, I'm falling asleep. That's why. <laughs> oh, you're falling asleep. Okay. Okay. But yes, thank y'all for tuning in, though. And be sure to hit the like button in your way in. So we get that YouTube algorithm, algorithm. Because, yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna censor my pages anymore, but I have decided to take myself off of social media, uh Twitter, Instagram, and Snap. And it's just like for personal reasons. Like I just I don't know, like social media is just so toxic. It's just everything is like I don't say everything is so negative, but it's like the only piece I find on like on the inner line, it's like watching like art videos, like somebody painting like pictures and flowers and stuff like that. I get like an overwhelming, overwhelming sensation of like just peace and relaxation. I don't know about y'all, but that's just me though. 
Like I like social media is just becoming like a cesspool for negativity. And as y'all know, you know, there's like this whole big gender war thing going on. And I mean, it's cool that we learning about like, you know, each other's mistakes and like things that we can work on. But I think that people are just kind of using like social media just to like kind of like just totally rag on our our race of people. And especially when people like to group every you melanated race out there together, you know, so if Africans do something over here to our people, then it's oh well, you know, these Negroes, Asian, blah, blah, blah. But it's really, you know, them Pan-Africans or them Africans or whatever. So it, it's just a lot of things that go into play. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all see my chat? I'm, I, may, I think I may have like two ladies. No, actually just one lady in the chat. Yeah. But I, but as you can see in my chat, it's just it's mostly you melanated Aboriginal American men, you know, supporting me, and I noticed that. I noticed that. So, you know, even even with like the pink pillars and um and you know and those like channels that be like talking like mad ish about you know the the gender wars and stuff uh, when it comes to like you melanated men, I even see you melanated men supporting those channels and you know and trying to um you know, teach the sisters, you know, what to look for in a man and stuff like that. So, so I don't want to like, just sit here and be like, oh, you know, just, or, you know, everything is horrible because I do see support on each side. I see support on each side. And I just think that people are just not paying attention to the people that are supporting them and looking out for them, you know, uh, cause I was telling, uh, I was on Instagram and I posted on my story and I was like, well, you know, I'm thinking about just kind of, you know, leaving Instagram and everything, you know, because uh, when it comes to the work that I do, like doing all this work and exposing people, and I don't like to use the term exposing people, but that's kind of like what it is. Like I'm outing people for what they do and like how they're putting people into these scams and stuff. You know, um, people get violent. You know, I have, I had had people, um, you know, threatened to um, cause injury to my mom, you know, they, they threatened to pull up and come like, you know, hurt my mom and my family and, you know, just all those different things. So, you know, right now I'm just like very cautious about, you know, um, myself and the others around me, you know, it just, it just kind of like, I never like really thought like, okay, with me exposing information like this, like people around me can, you know, get sucked up into that too, you know? So right now I'm just like really cautious about the things and just kind of like getting things in order because how these people are rocking, especially the, uh, you know, the mestizos and the mixed white people, they are upset that, you know, of course I am exposing them the way that I do. So they're going to do any and everything to get me to be quiet. Now, I already told y'all, I'm not leaving YouTube. I'm not leaving my YouTube, Patreon, or my podcast. So those are off the board. But with social media, I just I just don't care for it. Because any other time, I'm always getting a message of, oh, well, you know, the natives did this and they did that. And I don't care what the natives do. You know, if they're not threatening to hurt me, harm me, or my family, I don't care what they do. Now, if they're posting explicit pictures and videos and stuff like that, you know, let me know. If y'all come across that, let me know, you know, because um, I don't play uh, like that. I don't play it like that. So if y'all coming across, like, you know, the natives, like, spreading my personal information and things along that line, let me know so I can take the proper actions because what they're trying to do is they're trying to silence people and get people to shut up and i'm not one of these pan-africanists i'm not one of these people that be photoshopping headdresses on their head okay like i'm not one of those people and like you know and i tell y'all guys like there are ways for us to embrace our culture without having to take on foreign ideologies you know if you come from this tribe you know look up the jury and and um and how they you know, wore their clothing and their regalia, like really look into that and practice that, you know, um, 
look into getting chokers, look into turquoise jewelry, you know, look into, uh, you know, the breastplates and stuff like that. Like there are so many different ways for us to embrace our aboriginality. You know, we can't, we just can't resort to just Photoshop and stuff on our head. And, 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 you know, and that be giving the natives the ammo and even the pan Africanists, they be giving them ammo to, come at us at the way that they do because like they're like oh well you don't want to practice the culture you photoshop and stuff on your head and it's like i'll be like i'll be trying to tell them i'll be trying to tell them like there's other ways to embrace who you are you know it doesn't even necessarily you even have to even get those things like you are aboriginal in your natural form you know what i'm saying like whether you wear the locks or um you know you wear your hair in afro or um hell just even being a nudity like you are in your rawest form as an aboriginal person okay as an aboriginal american you are in your rawest form you know and um and that's why in my early days i didn't mind my unit my nudity you know i am very pro nudity okay i'm a southern indian okay um southern indians in my location in texas like there uh well and also depending on the location too but um but yeah, like we didn't always, you know, wear clothes either. So, um, and then, and then you got the images where, um, you know, where we wear our tobacco leaf skirts and stuff like that. Like that, that to me is aboriginality in our purest firm. You know, <laughs> I said that or weird firm. I'm sorry, form. So yeah, that's that's just how I feel. That just how I feel. Um, Mike Pistol, thank you so much for that very generous donation like oh my god like that means a lot to me that means a lot to me like to see this kind of support like means a lot to me like thank you so much let let me read it okay dear you are you you are not the negative things that may be in your environment it can't affect you unless you give it value and authority to move you. The internet does get noisy, though. Take breaks and leave the bull shiggity <laughs> where it's at. Thank you so much, Mike Pistol, for that generous donation. Like, that that really does warm my heart. Like, you know, because, like, I get tired, okay? <laughs> like, th like this, this type of work is very tiring, but I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much, you know. And it's not going to be... Um, you know, the end of me being on social media altogether. But, um, but you know, I, I do think it is important for me to take a break because, I mean, I don't really get like the natives bothering me as much as I used to. I still see them every now and then. And of course, they be in the chat box, you know, bussy popping and stuff. But um, I mean, yeah, yeah. But um, at the end of the day, though, you know, I'm not backing down out of what I do. You know, I came so far, you know, and, um, and to be in the game for so long, because a lot of people don't know, I've been talking about this since I was 19. I'm 25 now. That's like, what, six years, six years going on seven. I've been talking about this, you know, for, from a very early age. So, um, so yeah, I, I have no reason to quit, you know, and I'm releasing my book very soon too. I know I keep saying that, but um, I'm working on, uh, you know, more things what I can put in there and I've actually been finding techniques to help y'all, you know, get past the uh, brick wall that y'all come across in your genealogy. Cause I know a lot of y'all, um, when it comes to like getting the 1800s, y'all can't get past a certain um time frame so i want to make sure that i'm giving y'all as much tools as, as i can so y'all can get the best results you know and of course i want to talk about things that people aren't talking about already in my book so i don't want y'all to buy something that you probably are, are probably already know you know um so i want to make sure that um, i'm presenting new information and giving y'all guys you know, the best of the best, you know, the best of my abilities, that is. Um, so yeah, I, I really do appreciate that donation. I, I really do. Or super chat. Yeah, that's what they call it, super chat. I really do appreciate that. You know, um, so thank thank you again, Mike Pistol. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, oh hey, Ocean on the Rocks. Hey, what you up to? What you up to? 
Let me know if y'all want to come on the panel. You want to come on the panel, Ocean? Because I, I, I think you have fun with this one, with this angel guy. <laughs> I think you have fun with him. You wondering what's going to happen with the government, Smith? They hourglass ran drum. Mm -hmm. You know how Europeans are. If they go down, everybody got to go down. <laughs> okay, that's how they work. Helito Pony Locks. Oh, y'all are showing up and showing out in the chat. Like, I love this. I really do. it. Be sure to like this video, y'all. Be sure to give the thumbs up. Keep the thumbs up. So I can, you know, get more uh, viewers on the um, algorithm, YouTube algorithm. And I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I have been utilizing the don't recommend channel when it comes to these YouTube suggestions because YouTube has been um suggesting a lot of like negative stuff in in my uh you know what to watch or things to watch or whatever so i have been um really utilizing that button okay because i, I want to get more content that is not always negative and I'm, I'm actually thinking about um really changing like my approach with my channel too because i know i center a, a lot of my information kind of like around negativity so, um, so what I want to do is uh, pretty soon I want to talk about the 1950 census that they just released back in what earlier this April. They released the 1950 census. So I want to I want to uh, make a video discussing that and teaching y'all how to access that because I'm a member of the National Genealogical Society. So um, they they give us a lot of information about that so yeah you want me to drop the link okay cool so, so if y'all want to hop on the panel you know y'all can yeah because um that's the thing though like i get that um you know like what i'm doing now is important we should be addressing the people who spread misinformation about us because i i know that a lot of people are like oh well you know just ignore this, that, and the third, but if you ignore things for too long, the rumors can start getting worse and worse, and it can jeopardize not only your reputation, but the people around you, too. So I, I do think it's important for Aboriginal Americans to constantly, um, you know, multitask. We got we to gotta debunk the lies that are being taught about us. We got to um address you know genealogy and we, we got to do all these different things to make sure that um we are crossing all our t's and dot our i's okay and y'all know that we're having a food shortage you know and that we have been seeing that for the past couple of years to be honest you know the food shortage ain't really we knew we have been seeing it um, um especially uh with heb here in texas um when the pandemic first hit people were buying up all the toilet paper <laughs> okay like they were buying up all the toilet paper and let me tell you something i was going after like i was not really going after people but i was cussing people i'm like y'all dummies to sit here and took up all the toilet paper i'm like y'all down how y'all gonna eat toilet paper and then when it got time for me to go to the store and get toilet paper all the toilet paper gone i'm like damn boy well, maybe i should have been out there getting the toilet paper <laughs> They're taking up everything. And then people were taking up all the canned food, the ramen noodles. I remember the ramen noodle shop and H-E-B were wiped out clean. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, so we already experiencing food shortages as it is. So, um, so yeah. So, um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, so yeah, but, um, I'm also thinking about, um, with my other channel, I may actually, you know, I may just do it with this channel. I may just make like a playlist and, um, and show y'all guys like about growing. Cause I, I have, uh, done that before, but I kind of slacked off, but, um, it's this thing that I really want to get in. Um, and it's like a, uh, aquaponic, aquaponic 
aquaponic. I hope I'm saying it right. Yeah, it's like an aquaponic and, you know, it grows uh, your food and, you know, you just put like your plants in the little pods and um, it fertilizes it, it waters it for you and you only have to do like little maintenance to it like each week and that's it, like one time, once a week and that's it. And I really want to check that out and I'm going to um, do a review on it because I want y'all guys to see it. So, yeah, so we, we should have been growing our own for like for like five years now but it was okay yeah, I'm, I'm yeah it's okay because one thing that i learned is that um you know i'm learning like not to be so i don't want to say judgment yeah judgmental yeah i'm learning not to be so judgmental and mean because i know like sometimes i could be like really rude and i'm working on that i'm working on like being more compassionate and considerate of people you know, so yeah, yeah. So I have to tell y'all guys, I came across a crow at my workplace last night. Okay. And like, I went into the break room and, I, and the light came on because, you know, um, yeah, the, the light came on because uh, it's like sensor, like it, it knows like when someone's like in the room. And so the light came on and like this crow just like flew right in front of me. And I was like, oh, oh you know, and I was, I was like ducking. I was like, I hope it don't poop on my head. <laughs> and so I put my food in the refrigerator and it like flew over my head. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. So I just ran up out of there. <laughs> I was like, no, I do not deal with with birds like that. I mean, I don't have nothing against no birds, but I don't want them inside, you know, flying across my head. You know, I don't want them dookieing on my head or anything. And I already know how um, birds flying in the house get down. I don't know if this has happened to y'all before, but um, usually when I come across birds, like in a, a uh, space, like in a house or whatever, it's a sign that someone's going to die okay and it may vary for different people but um but yeah so i how i know because back in 2015 right right after i graduated high school i went to go stay with my aunt and so i was on the phone with my grandma and then I saw, and then like I looked over to my left and I saw like this bird flying through my aunt kitchen and then it left the house. You know, my aunt was like, oh yeah, you know, it's good luck. It's good luck. Yeah, that's what she said. She says, good luck. But I just had a bad feeling. It wasn't no good luck. Okay. And my grandma, of course, my grandma, y'all know how elders be talking. They be like, oh, well, she must not keep her house clean. I'm like, grandma, she do keep her house clean. Like it, it, they just had the door open and the bird just flew up in there. But child, not eat like a week later, a week later, my grandma died. My grandma passed away. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then when I saw that crow like flying in the in the building, you know, I was like, oh snap. You know, and I just talked to my cousin, you know, she was telling me things that she was going through, and I was like, hey you need to be careful about whoever you hang around and what's going on. Cause I just had a bird, you know, flew up in, you know, the break room or whatever. So I, I think someone's going to, um, you know, pass away. Someone's going to die. She's like, Oh, well, you know, it's just, it's probably means like your psychic abilities are heightening and it's getting stronger. Cause she said she'd been wanting to contact me and then I just contact her out the blue. And I was like, yeah, you know, and, and I was looking more into it and it said like, if like, um, a bird fly over your head, it means that you need to do shadow work or was that like flying in front of you? You need to do shadow work. And if it's flying over your head, it's like a different perspective or something to that nature. And I was like, eh, okay, I do need to do shadow work. And, um, so I was like, okay, well, you know, as long as you, you know, doing your spiritual bath and you cleansing yourself, okay. Tell me why she texted me this morning and said that her boyfriend cousin died of an illness. Child, I was like, 
No freaking way, bro. I was like, I knew it. I knew someone was going to pass away. I just knew it. I didn't know this person, but I just knew like when I see birds flying in the building, whether it's a house or whatever, I know something is down. Someone's going to pass away. And let alone my cousin texted me this morning saying her boyfriend cousin passed away because of an illness. And I was like, damn. Because I was, I was actually hoping, you know, it was probably positive how she was trying to put it. But no, her boyfriend cousin passed away. So I was like, dang, you know, but that's just how it is. Like, you know, and um, yeah, I, I just think it's time for me to get back into my spirituality because, you know, they say like the uh, crow represents like, you know, uh, clairvoyant abilities and stuff like that. And I'm like, <sighs> child, anyway, though. I'm over here just talking and talking. It's like 31 minutes. We even talked about the video. I'm sorry. I'm about to go in the comments here telling like, y'all, y'all going to have to start this video at this time. <laughs> I'm going to start this video at this time because I, I was talking about stuff. So, so yeah. But in, in my experience, birds flying in a house or, you know, building, whatever, it's a sign someone's going to pass away. For me, maybe different for other people, but yeah, I, I, I was, um, yeah, I, I wasn't feeling that. So <laughs> I was not feeling that. But anyway, so let me go ahead and play this video. I know I have talked long enough and I know the people on the chat and in the watching this video, it's like, girl, play the video. You like to hear the spiritual side? Yeah, I, I may just not focus on other YouTube channels because what I wanted to do was I wanted to make like separate uh channels for different things but I think I may just do it all in one channel of course like I have my other channel and I can probably use it as like a backup channel just in case this one gets shut down or whatever but yeah I, I may I may start talking about spirituality occultism all of that good stuff on here. So I know, I know, I know. But you know, my cousin said that uh, you know, a few days prior to her, she came across a crow too. So I I wasn't expecting for her to talk about, you know, her coming across a crow either. So I was like, I don't know what the ancestors are trying to tell us, but they're trying to tell us a lot. But for me, when I come across a crow. Oh, not really a crow, but like a bird and the owls flying and stuff. It's it's just, it's not good. It's just no bueno, no bueno. But anywho, I'm going to play this video about this angel person. I, I, I don't, I don't know this man. I don't know him. I don't know much about him. All I know is the videos that he be posting and he just, but yeah, I, I have to agree with, with Jack man though. He don't, um, what he say? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's he's a half researcher, so y'all y'all gonna see that in a minute though. But I'm gonna go ahead and play this video because I've been I've been rambling enough. A message on Instagram from a sister who had watched my videos addressing African Americans who believe that they are not African but instead native to America. Just to recap on that video and bring you up to date if you haven't seen it. My belief, as is many scholars and historians, based on archaeological evidence and DNA evidence and more is that Native Americans came into America in two waves. One group of people from Northeast Asia, known as the Eurasians, and another group from Australasia, known as the Australasian Aboriginals and or Melanesians. To break that down, that will mean there was light-skinned or red natives in America and dark-skinned or black natives in America, who of course would have mixed together throughout the years, as modern-day Native Americans have DNA connecting to both groups of people. It is also believed that Africans from West Africa and North Africa traveled to the Americas many centuries before Christopher Columbus and made trades with the peoples of the Americas like the Aztecs, Olmecs, Mayans, and such, as well as shared knowledge with them on a multitude of arts and civilization building. These Africans were then worshipped as gods and memorialized by way of statues for their gifts to the American people. Now, it is possible that some of these African explorers and traders may have stayed in the Americas, but this would not have been huge numbers. 
The main migration of African peoples to the Americas was sadly via human trafficking or the transatlantic slave trade. As y'all can see, he already with the bull. He talking about uh, the Australians and the Eurasians coming over here. And I mean, that's fine and dandy. We already know. Um, we already have heard about that because of, you know, they trying to say Luzia people come from Australia and all the other stuff. You know, now they're trying to switch it up and say that she come from Berenginia. But Berenginia is the Baron Strait theory. So um, we, we already know how they fraudulent all the other stuff. But I just I think I think it's very funny how Pan-Africanists love to sit here and say that we only got here with, by the way of the slave trade. But let's. I mean, I, I want to remind the viewers too, because if you're if you're not hip, and if you knew, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Okay, but um, but not that many Africans even came over here. <laughs> so to sit here and say, oh well, you know, we we all came here by the way to translate the slave trade. It's like, like, are are you slow? Because they can sit here and say, oh, well, you know, 10.7 10 million Africans were shipped uh, to Americas, okay? But only 388,000 came to North America, mainland North America. Let me zoom that in so y'all can see. Because I, I realized that y'all can't really see the screen like I think y'all can. <laughs> Oh my God. Because <laughs> <'Cause> I'll <laughs> I'll be looking back. I'm like, I can't really see the screen. So my bad, y'all. But hopefully I can see that better. But yeah, so I mean it's like that's that's not a lot of people coming over here. If anything, Africans have been coming over here in large numbers due to immigration in recent years. And we have seen that through Pew Research Group. Because they have been documenting these immigrants coming over to America for a hot minute now. And so, I mean, 38, I mean, I'm sorry, 388,000 compared to the Africans that have been coming over here in the past decades. That's, that's nothing. That's not a lot. Yeah. So... So yeah, I, I just already being a distant dean genius with his message, but nonetheless, let's keep going. So in my video addressing those who believe that they are Aboriginal Americans or indigenous Americans, some brothers and sisters had mentioned Pangea and that these people were actually on the continent already as the tectonic plate shifted. I actually addressed that in the Out of Africa Theory video. How many of y'all believe in Pangea? Cause I don't. <laughs> I, I don't I don't believe in Pangea not one bit. I I really don't though. I d I don't believe in Pangea. But how many of y'all do though? Let me know. How many of y'all believe in Pangea? Oh, he's mixed? Hmm. That's interesting. Let me guess, his mama white, right? You think Pangea is like saying diaspora? It really is, though. It, it really is. Because, I mean, honestly, that's how people are trying to get in when it comes to being Aboriginal American. They'd be like, oh, well, you know, Pangea, like, that's, that's not the same, boo. Like, that's not the same. Okay. And there has been talk of America being the oldest continent. So, but again, like, I don't really believe everything the Europeans say and the information they give us because it's very disingenuous and they're not always 100% truthful with what they have to say. So I, I also, how can I put it? Hold on one So, um... So yeah, but I don't really believe in everything these people have to say. 
because one thing that I noticed that they love to do is say, oh, well, you know, scientifically proven, like child, how many times they say something has been scientifically proven and it turned out to be fake? So it's like, how can we sit here and trust you? But the information you have to say But, um, I mean, like, how, how are we supposed to trust you? If everything that, that y'all literally tell us is a lie. And that's what they fail to realize is that we can't sit here and say, oh, yeah, 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 these scientists are right. When all they do is sit here and say, oh, well. Okay, yeah, this is what I wanted to show y'all. Okay, and Safa Karu posted this on Facebook. So I, I just want to share this right quick. I don't know if y'all have came across this already. Laugh out loud. They don't realize that the whole earth is connected. There's solid earth under the ocean. We're just above sea level. It's really true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is true, though. That is true. I, I agree, Lil Mayhem. I really do. Yeah, that is true. Okay, so it says, The learned wranglers on this shadowy and dim point forgot that all leading geologists now agree in the opinion that America is the oldest known continent on the face of the planet. That the fossil remains of human beings found in various parts of it, far distant from each other, prove that man lived there in times immemorial. And that we have not the slightest ray of light to illumine, I'm sorry, illumine the darkness that surrounds the origin of those uh, primeval men. Furthermore, it is now admitted by the generality of scientists that man, far from descending from a single pair located in a particular portion of the Earth's surface, has appeared on every part of it where the biological conditions have been uh, propitious to his development and maintenance, and that the production of various species with their distinct well-marked anatomical and intellectual characteristics was due to the difference of those biological conditions and to the general forces calling forth animal prevalent in the places where each particular species have appeared and whose distinctive marks were adapted to his peculiar environment. So I, I do agree uh, wholeheartedly with this, because um, one thing that people forget is that America is very, 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 very old. Okay, very old. Sorry, y'all. I'm over here reading. Okay. So, I I, I, I just, I don't know about the scientists. I don't agree. Hold on. That, that person looks familiar. Oh, this is interesting. Sorry. Oh, this is, yeah, this is an article I already showed you. I'm not going to show you all that. I already did it. Conspiracies must be real if they can hit our people with it in court. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but let's, let's go back to this dude, though, because, yeah, we, we already addressed that. That video will be linked in the description. First, let's go to the meaning of Aboriginal or Aborigine. The dictionary states inhabiting or existing in a land from the earliest time or from before the arrival of colonists. This could also be used and said for the first peoples of this land we call Earth. These first peoples being African people. We sometimes hear many Pan-Africanists referring to themselves or black people as original man or woman. 
I've seen a lot of people saying, but Malcolm X knew the truth. He stated in one. Okay. So if you know our people refer to themselves as the original man and woman, like why are you still trying to force us to say we African? That makes no sense. But he also brings up Malcolm X, which we're going to talk about too, because I have seen people talk about him and I used to too. But one thing I want to point out is that I feel like we should not solely rely on these leaders, especially people that was involved in the civil rights to sit here and uh, give validation to us being indigenous, because I noticed a lot of them were like wishy-washy, especially James Baldwin. I saw James Baldwin talk about us being indigenous, but then in the next breath, he talked about being a Negro and I, I think African too. So, I mean, I don't really rely on these people because I remember that, you know, a lot of these civil rights leaders and these people that were supposedly speaking for us, they were on the pale Jewish uh, uh, payroll. Okay, so I don't really rely on what other people have to say, especially Malcolm, even though I love Malcolm X, like Malcolm, he was he was a good man. Okay, you said Bobby Hammett too, y'all. A lot of people love Bobby Hammett. I, I remember when I used to question Bobby Hammett, I was like, why does it take for y'all to hear Bobby tell y'all? to create your own magic. Like, why ain't this common sense? And people were so mad at me saying that they were like, oh, you're just hating on Bobby. I'm like, I'm not hating on Bobby. Like, it, it, I don't know how long it took Bobby to realize the things that he knew, but I came out the womb knowing this information. Like, like not trying to be like, I'm better or anything, but I mean, I don't know. People are just weird at times. Hold on, I done left my sock here. I was looking for that sock at home. I'm sorry, I got distracted because <laughs> I just came across my sock on the floor. I'm like, where'd that sock come from? But uh, <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, so yeah, they they be yeah, uh, a lot of people be flip flopping. And I mean, what he says about Malcolm X and his speech is right and wrong because hold on, I'm just gonna play it. I'm gonna play it for y'all. One of his speeches that we are Aboriginal. So these people have taken that to mean that we are native to the Americas. However, this is misinterpretation and manipulation of his speech, especially when you only use 30 seconds of a clip and therefore you don't have the context behind the speech that was over an hour and a half long. This particular speech, which I'm going to link in the description, was addressing that the black man is the original man of the planet. Which is true. We are original to... Um... Yeah, yeah, a little mayhem. Yes, correct. But yes, yeah, so um, he did he did talk about us being original, you know, to the earth, of course, you know. And I hear people always talking about context, 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 and that is true to a degree. You do need to hear the context of things, but still, it's like he still said that we are Aborigine, though. You know, and it may not necessarily because I I did look at that part and. He he said a lot of things like um in his speech. And there's actually on his website, there's like a whole um dialogue of his speech. So I'm I'm not gonna get too much into that. But um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna continue to play. Malcolm X explains what Aborigine means, and he does not relate Aborigine to the Americas whatsoever. In the same speech, Malcolm X states that we are strangers in America. Then he goes on to state okay, that you I, and I, I want to point that out right quick because, of course, he'll be like, oh, well, you know, he said that we're strangers. But I want to point something out. I'm not going to sit here and overanalyze this thing because I would really like for him to do it himself. But, of course, Malcolm passed away. So I can't, you know, I can't really ask him what he meant by that. But we can tell by the context, okay? Okay. So this is the dialogue of his speech. Okay. This is the dialogue of his speech. 
And it says, for instance, he says that in Genesis, the 15th chapter and the 13th verse, just to give you an example. And he said unto Ab Abram, know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years and also that nation whom they shall serve i will will i just and afterwards shall they come out with great substance now y'all already know i do not mess with this bible stuff and for this exact reason these people write out what they want us to oh, okay y'all familiar with erica badu right and even Dane talked to me about this as well, Dane Calloway. He also talked to uh, me about this on my uh, other live stream when we was talking about Tariq and him and stuff like that. Erica Badu said, write down on a piece of paper what you want to happen and it will happen. What makes the Bible so different from this? Because supposedly the Bible is supposed to be thousands of years old, but yet y'all don't think that they would have manifested this or they written um they have written it to where they can use it to subjugate us because we already know that they were trying to uh make us strangers in our own homeland we already know that they were trying to put us as foreigners and, and trying to um denounce our identity as original people to america or the americas in some cases so we already know how people get down with the bible okay now i'm not saying he's taking it out of context but i'm saying people wrote the bible for a reason and we know that the bible was used to further subjugate our people so when people use the Bible to bring up a reason why they are this, that, and the third, I'm like, we still have to remember who wrote it and why they wrote that. And we have to remember that this religion was forced onto you melanated Aboriginal American people. It was forced onto the originals of America. Okay, we are the original people, so to make us feel like we don't have no claims to anywhere. Of course, they're going to sit here and call us foreigners. Of course, they're going to sit here and try to rewrite our history. They always do. You said they're still trying to manifest. Yeah. You know, but it can only work if we believe in it, though. Hold on. I got to sneeze right quick. Okay, I thought I had to sneeze, but I, I don't know. Y'all know how, like, you feel like you got to sneeze and you can feel, like, your nose and your mouth trickling or something, and then it goes away. <laughs> that's what it just did to me but um yeah so but anyway i don't want to harp on that for too long um now the honorable elijah muhammad says that explains his teachings right there because he teaches that the so-called negro is the one that the bible is talking about now why can't this be about white people or the pale people or the iranian whatever you want to call them why can't this be about them because they were being sent to america as slaves and they were then they were being classified as uh negro as well so yeah exactly they they suppose they came over here running from religious persecution yeah but a lot of them were coming over here because they were criminals and they had to fulfill their indentured servitude time um there were um immigrants that were coming to bleach out the melanated american populations to to bleach us out of history and and to make our future generations you know come closer to white until they can be identified in the white population oh yeah like there's there's a lot to this racial whitening thing as well so and also too pale folks were on the plantation with you melanated aboriginals of america as well so why can't this be about pale people because america is not home to the pale people but it is to the quote-unquote aborigine though but let's continue though
Aborigines. But you- oh, hold on, wait. I'm sorry. I'm gonna sit here. Let me go back. I got, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. Hold on. Okay. So, um, so who have spent 400 years and are strangers in a land that is not theirs? And you can't deny that we are strangers here. I don't think any of you will deny that we are strangers here. We are not in a country where we are made to feel at home. We'll put it that way. So it's like you're saying that we are strangers here, but you're kind of insinuating that we're strangers here because we are not, we are in a country that makes us feel like we're not at home, basically. So he goes on further to say, well, put it that way. There is hardly any Negro in his right mind who can say he feels at home in America. But yet, you wouldn't feel at home in Africa either. Africans don't even want you over there. Anyway. Um, he has to admit that he is made to feel like a stranger, right or wrong. I mean, which is two to a degree, but that's all about the mind of manipulation though like that's what the pale people do they manipulate and he even talked about this in his um speech as well but anyway well this is what god said to abraham would happen in this day and time remember abraham's religion was islam abraham wasn't a drew jew abraham wasn't a christian abraham wasn't a buddhist abraham was a muslim which means he obeyed God. God told him, yes, blah, blah, blah. He said, your people are gone into bondage. They're going to become slaves. They're going to be afflicted. They'll be strangers in the land far from home for 400 years. Now, they were sending Aboriginal Americans to Europe as slaves who are now categorized as black most likely because even jack d forbes talked about it yeah they they were uh sending uh australian aboriginals to other lands as well as as slaves so it's like or prisoners of war however you want to put it so it's like I mean, there's so many people that can fit that narrative. Why just put that narrative on us when we already know we are original to America? And number two, it's like, why can't pale people fit this description either? Because they're in bondage over here too. They over here thinking that they free. White people ain't free. They thinking, oh, well, you know, um, this, this country is for white people. Is it though? Because if we ain't got no money, you you at the bottom with the rest of us. You may got some uh pale skin, but that pale skin don't save you from everything. You are gonna need some money. And and people forget that Walter Plecker he was also banging on his own, own people too, calling them uh feasible and and feeble minded. People love to forget about that though. Yes, yes, R.L. Smith. Don't forget to hit the like button, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, but let, let's go on and listen to the rest of this, though. You don't like to be called Aborigine. You want to be called an American. Yeah. And you've got these same people calling themselves Aboriginal Americans and claiming that Malcolm X told them so. Now, in context of the entire speech, Brother Malcolm X is stating, we are the original man from Africa, but you don't want to be African or the original man. You want to be called American. Malcolm X highlights that nothing white is original and the white man is not the original man. He then goes on to explain his belief and doctrine at the time of how the white man, non-original or aborigine to the planet or Africa was created. Do you see how context changes everything? Aborigines, which means what? Black folks. You never think of white Aborigines. Uh, yeah, the Aborigines are called natives, so they're always dark skinned people. You and I are Aborigines. You don't have to be called an Aborigine. You want to be called an American. <laughs> Aborigine actually means from the beginning. Two Latin words. Ab means from. Origine means the beginning. 
And abolitionism is only the term applied to those dark skinned people who have been on this earth since the beginning of the universe. I asked the brothers and sisters who claim to be Native American or have this Aboriginal or Australasian blood to take the test. Okay, so we already know where he's going with that. So I'm, I'm gonna rewind that right quick because I didn't mean to jump the gun. But um, but yeah, remember I, I call I call myself Origini, you know, and I, I call myself Origini for that uh, reason because Origini in the Latin form it means family, source, um, ancestry. And to me, I'd rather be called something that I know that starts with me because originally means the source, the beginning. So why not call myself an original? I'm originally of America. Period. Okay, I'm the beginning of America. I am of America. Yeah, they always do. Yeah, Pan Africans always got some stories on how white people was created. And when we ask white people where they come from, they always want to talk about Neanderthals. Like, we know you Neanderthal, but where did Neanderthal come from? Oh, they come from Africa. Mm. And we know that we and we know that's why they be trying to um push that out of Africa theory because you know they be like, oh well, you know, Homo sapiens are the first human, but the Neanderthal traveled out of Africa first and everybody else that came out intermingled with them so we already know that's why they be pushing out africa theory because they want to be seen as the uh, the forefront and they always trying to put it as like african i'm not africans uh neanderthals weren't nasty people and uh, 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 uh. now there were chocolate coated neanderthals but i say that for a different story oh my coffee got cold but I'm up a little bit though, so it's okay. I'm gonna make some more later. So, um, so yeah. So my thing is, it's like I I get it, you know, and that's why I tell y'all guys like we we can't solely rely on these people. Child, look, and he brought up Jacob. Ain't Jacob the one that created white people? Child, listen here. <laughs> but I mean, he still said, I mean, Malcolm still said Aborigine, though. So, I mean, he may not have liked the term American, and it's not, and it's not our fault that we want to be labeled as American, too, because uh, people forget that American. Let me see if I can pull it up. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got hiccups. Okay. American, pertaining to America. American noun in Native America originally applied to the Aboriginals or copper color races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. Now, why wouldn't Aboriginal people want to call themselves American? Because obviously, hold on, let me let me zoom in right quick because I know you're probably like, yo, we can't really see it that like that. Okay, but let me let me zoom in. There you go. Okay. So still, like, like it says, but now applied to the sense of Europeans born in America. So it's obvious that they hijacked the word from us. And I don't necessarily agree with the term native because native means you just born here. Like anybody can be native, but not everybody can be original. Feel me? So, but again, like, I don't know. I don't, I'm just tired of people trying to shame us for stuff that obviously belongs to us, you know, and we have every right to claim any type of terminology that we that we see fit. Now, I don't see why people going around calling themselves indigenous, but want to sit here and call themselves African-American in the same breath. But you do you, boo. You do you. You do you. But anyway, let me play this video, though. For those dark skinned people who have been on this earth since the beginning of the universe. 
I asked the brothers and sisters who claim to be Native American or have this Aboriginal or Australasian blood to take DNA tests, as it will prove whether or not they truly are descendants of the black-skinned Native Americans. They would at least have some population-wide DNA. But I was told that DNA testing is a scam and is false, and that the genetic markers for the indigenous black Americans are so similar to Africans that it would not give the right results. Right. Hold on. Who said that the genetic marker is close to Africans? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Hold on. Let me let me rewind that. Maybe I didn't hear him correctly. The indigenous Black Americans are so similar to Africans that it would not give the right results. So indigenous Black Americans. Dana. Similar to Africans. DNA. But I was told that DNA testing is a scam and is false. And that the genetic markers for the indigenous black Americans are so similar to Africans that it would not give the right results. Who said that? Who said it was similar? Who said that? Who said it? Who said our markers are or what? Hold on, let me, let me remind that right quick. I, I, maybe I'm not. It's a scam and it's false. And that the genetic markers for the indigenous black Americans are so similar to Africans that it would not give the right results. Right. It's not similar to Africans because Africans come from us, period. We sit here and brought cultivation and civilization to Africans. And plus, yeah, and plus, uh, you know, Aboriginals have been going over there and mixing with uh, Africans for a hot minute now. So it's just kind of like, it's not that it's similar. It's just the fact that people have been, done a piss poor job in differentiating between our DNA and Africans' DNA. Because, hold on, let me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find um, what it was called. I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm trying to remember where this, the source is because Hold on. Hold on, because I'm trying to remember like where I uh where I found that information from. But hold on. Oh, yeah, because I because it was another DNA test too. We're not really a DNA test, but like it was like this university that was um, you know, I'm gonna have to share it after the end of this video because it's it's on my other um account. Hold on, maybe if I pull it up on my messenger, then I can go on my other messenger. Maybe it pop up or something like that. But anywho. Yeah, so I mean, I I don't I don't know what he is, is trying to plan out here, but I'm I'm not following for it. Like I mean, I don't know who out here saying that our DNA is so similar to Africans, and that's why they can't differentiate us. But that's a lie, because they they have done a um uh I don't want to say it, like a test for it. Yeah, they have done it. They did. They did do it. Like they did a study about that. And it also included included the Gullah Geechee as well. So maybe it maybe if I pull it up on here.
Because now I'm I'm getting a headache now. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't I don't mean to get quiet, but I'm but I'm trying to find that source. But anyway, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to play this video. Right. So instead, they said that they just asked grandma. Yes. Their basis is to go back and ask grandma who believes she's Native American, which to me is fine, since I have a grandma who was part Native American. And guess what? When I did my DNA test, her Native blood showed up. However, my grandma is not a black Native American. She's mixed, and she's a run-of-the-mill red Native. So I didn't have any Melanesian DNA, which would be an indicator of the black Natives from Australasia. So with that out of the way, back to my message on Instagram. A sister, a sister hit me up, a black, a black woman. She's, she's half American, American quarter Belizean, and a quarter Honduran. Notice I gave nationalities and ethnicities, but I highlighted firstly that she's black, black because, because there's a difference between race and nationalities. And nationalities. You, have you have to elaborate in some cases. cases. Her grandmother, however, was part Cherokee and part black American or African American. So this sister did a DNA test. Within this DNA test, it brought up a number of African countries, around 84%, with the highest percentage being 40% Nigerian. But notice this, her grandmother was part Native American, Cherokee. So here, you see 3% Native American DNA, but you also see something else. 1% Melanesia. This, based on the two migrations, would make 4%. So her grandmother was obviously telling the truth. This sister is a descendant of not only the Eurasian Native Americans, but also the Aboriginal Native Americans. Although a small percentage, she can still lay some sort of claim to being a descendant of the first Americans. But she's obviously more African than anything else, and still an African woman. So this sister's results and her family background prove my video about African Americans who claim they're not African. So why don't you prove that you have these two groups of native blood or even just the Melanesian blood in large amounts if you're that confident of who you are in your background? DNA doesn't lie, but you don't believe in DNA testing. <laughs> Peace, love, and coconut oil. We are African. Child, did he just say peace, love, and coconut oil? <laughs> Child, what? What? Peace, love, and coconut oil. I, I just can't. I just can't. <sighs> That's the problem with people that believe in DNA and session tests. They don't do their research on stuff. Oh, if you, if you was indigenous, it would show up on your DNA and see if it is. Child, what? Huh? It would. Oh, my God, I don't remember. I don't remember none of my passwords. Oh, my God, bro. I'm trying to remember stuff is hard. Okay. But anyway, let me let me show y'all guys what what he is not really telling the truth about, okay? Now this is the National Human Genome Research Institute. Pay attention y'all. Pay attention. Okay, cuz they this is the people that be talking about these DNA ancestry tests. Right. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign out. So I get into my other account. Y'all, why I be rhyming like this, though? <laughs> I just be rhyming out of nowhere. Wow, they really sit here and, and try to get me out of my account, really. Yes, it was me, bro. It was me. Let me in, let me in. Okay. But anyway, so let, let's read what this guy is saying, though. <sighs> okay. 
the claims of many hold on let me let me zoom in right quick because i know you're like okay yona we can't say we can't say what it says zoom in so i zoomed in yeah exactly it's for entertainment purposes only the name says just art for entertainment purposes only okay so this lady sarah hole phd in hina traveled to alaska in july of 2018 to give a talk on ethics and genetic ancestry tests researchers and community members filled the room okay so hina she says the claims of many consumer ancestry kits are overstated because the science isn't there yet so right off the gate it's like it's a scam how are, how are you not seeing it for what it is? Their latest research focuses on direct-to-consumer genetic ancestry kits. People who are in, interested in the genealogical history purchase the hit kits to learn more. The kit provides ancestry information and estimates their ethnicity using DNA found in the con, uh, consumer saliva. Okay, Hina explained to the crowd that DTC ancestry kits fall short on accuracy because they only offer a probability towards a certain ancestry. So a test that claims an individual has Native American ancestry could be wrong. But yet, Angel wants you to take a DNA ancestry test to prove, quote unquote, that you're Aboriginal American. Hilarious. Like the tomfoolery just never stopped. So right off the gate, they they telling you, hey, you know, you can't really prove your ethnicity with these kids. But let Angel tell it, you're a liar if you don't want to take one. You're scared to take one. If and if you don't, and if it says you African, then you African. Like these these tests are like not accurate and they're not reliable. And they want to sit here and say, oh, well, uh, well, uh, we can't prove your ancestry. What? Huh? And yeah, Pan Africanists want us to sit here and send our DNA to these corporations who we know going to sell it off to Big Pharma to create uh, biological weapons of mass destruction against the population. To sit here and prove ourselves to them, they out they rabbit mind. They are out their rabbit flipping mind. I'm not taking no DNA. I mean, and the thing is, people say, "Oh, well, you know, they can get your DNA, but just at the doctor." But I mean, like that's a violation of HIPAA, though. Like they know they're not supposed to be sharing your data with other people like that even if they throw it away like i don't get why people make excuses for these pale people to do whatever whenever with our dna because they can get it from the doctor that makes no sense of course they can get it from the doctor of course ain't nobody like no one ain't denying that but it's an out of ethical standpoint What did a uh, big worm say? <laughs> he said it's been, it's about to press the ballot. Okay. I'm not gonna send out my DNA to no person talking about taking DNA and sexual test, and then they turn around and use my DNA for weapons of mass destruction. I'm not doing that. They're gonna have to come up, up, up from come up to the doctor's office and mind you. They can use your DNA for things, but I mean, they're going to have to get it during a certain time frame. Because if they're not storing it properly, and if they're using, um, and, you know, if they're disposing of like your blood and stuff, they can't use that because it's already been tainted. It's already been contaminated, how people say. So... I, I just don't know about people, y'all, but let me continue on with this. Ho <sighs> soon recognized that there's more to the story. As she talked with the community members, she began to get a sense of the value of DNA t- 
test kits on defining a Native person. Ancestry kits can't determine Native American identity. Ooh. 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 Ancestry kits can't determine Native American identity. I'm going to say it one more again for the people in the back. For the people in the back. Ancestry kids can't determine Native American identity. And yet, what what what, what does this person want us to do? Let, let, let's, let's rewind this video. Let's rewind this video. And also, I want to address that another thing, too, that he said. Of course, we're going to sit here and ask our elders about who we are. Are you crazy to sit here and say that we're not going to, you know, involve our elders in the process of learning more about ourselves and where we come from how dare you how dare you and yet to sit here and say that we're only basing this off on our grandmas is also it's a pretty pathetic attempt to try and debunk us and it also shows that they're not listening fully to what people have to say because I don't know about other people. Now, other people can be out here spreading this misinformation, but not I. Because what do I always tell people? Do your genealogy. Okay, let me and let me type in genealogy too, because I don't I don't think people understand what the term genealogy is. Okay. Genealogy. A line of descent traced continuously from an ancestor. Okay. Now look look at the similar terms. Pedigree, pedigree, ancestry, family tree, bloodline. Nowhere here do I see it says something about DNA ancestry tests. Okay. Genealogy is the study of families, family history, and the tracing of their lineages. Now, genealogists might use genetic analysis in their research, but genealogy does not solely consist of that, considering that genetic analysis is new. The whole uh, DNA and social testing is new. They're trying to push the people that, oh, yeah, genealogy means DNA ancestry test. No, the hell it don't. <laughs> Bone found on Michigan Beach ID with genetic genealogy. Child, they're calling it genetic genealogy. Gen genetic genealogy is not the same as genealogy itself. Look, dictionary, genealogy, a record or account of the ancestry and descent of a person, family group, etc. The study of family ancestries and histories. So again, explain to me how this, this is only DNA ancestry test though. And of course, Google is not a reliable source because Google is a search engine. But however, because it's a search engine, it leads you to different sources for people that don't know <laughs> okay because people love to say oh well google ain't a reliable source uh duh because it's a search engine you don't know what a search engine is a search engine is like bing google um yahoo search those are uh search engines search engines lead you to sources like it just led me to this one Okay, so for people that don't know what genealogy is, now you know. We just looked at the dictionary of the term genealogy. Now you know. <laughs> okay, so I won't hear nothing about nobody talking about some de uh, ancestry test genealogy. Is that eight gen the fact that they're trying to push that genealogy is synonymous with DNA ancestry test just proves that there's an agenda with this whole ge uh, genetic genealogy thing that they're trying to do.
Oh, okay. Uh, TBM says, one big point is I got African ancestry DNA test done, but when I went to Africa, I found out they don't send them tests out to Africa to be done because my wife was trying to do it to while still out there. Mm-hmm. So what they really basing it off on though? Because according to African ancestry, they, they base it on all these genomes and all this uh you know genetics but it's like if they can't get it done with that then what does that say ciao but anyway let, let's i'm gonna I'm rewind what he had you know i'm not gonna play him no more because he getting on my nerves let's share this some more Okay, so ancestry kids can't determine Native American identity. We got that. Good. Move on. Okay. Community relationships, traditions, and shared experiences are more important aspects of identity, which is true. Okay. This struck at the heart of whole and what's her name? Uh, Hina, because I'm not saying that last name. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Okay. And I'm not trying to struggle to say that word so y'all can see her and call me a dummy. Because, baby, I don't know how to pronounce this word. But, <laughs> I'm sorry. But we're going to call her Hina. Yeah, Hina and Ho. Okay, Hina and Ho. Okay. To find out how genetic ancestry companies define indigenous identity. Okay. So, how to sell identity. Hmm, interesting. The NIH Tribal Adversary Committee serves as a direct connection between tribal communities and the NIH. They lodge a concern regarding the use of human genetic material in research and its implication for American Indian identity. Specifically, how are DTC genetic ancestry kits mark, marked and interpreted to categorize tribal identity? To find out, Hina identified and combed through 73 sites currently offering or selling DTC genetic ancestry kits, analyzing each site, Hina asked the question, if I were a consumer, what would I learn? What can these companies do for me? Not a damn thing, because you can't take them a uh, test to go enroll into indigenous tribe. You're going to have to bring up them documents. But anyway, she found 25 sites that offered services to measure Native American ancestry as a distinct category, which includes both federally recognized tribes and other indigenous people in the U.S., to ca uh, categorize this category, they use words such as Native American, Indigenous, North American, American Indian, and First Nations. Of those 25 sites, only three explicitly distinguish between genetic ancestry and concepts of race and ethnicity. The remaining sites lean towards the opposite stance, promoting a casual link between genetics and identity. For example, eight companies claim their tests would help consumers discover who they are using a language such as reinvent the way you see yourself and discover yourself two other companies advertise that their tests could confirm culture and traditions these claims concern hina it would concern me too because what when a dtc test kit tell you can tell you who you are the very notion of identity begins to fall apart mm -mm -mm. <laughs> can you clone a person from spit i don't know but I, I think it, it, all it takes is just that DNA. They can extract your DNA from that. Remember off the Proud family movie when Penny and her family went to the island with Dr. Carver? He's like, my name is God, y'all. And he was taking up their DNA. He, he clipped the grandma toenails and took the hair from the dog and the hair from Penny and, uh, and, uh, uh, and a, a baby bottle from one of the twins y'all and and he that's the only thing that he needed to clone them so it, it may it may just be all right smith see you later but yeah so i mean 
in their paper, Hull and, D and Hina point out that Senator Elizabeth Warren's argument of having the American history is one of the example of people claiming tribal heritage with genetic testing. But claims like this have raised concern when wielded for personal gains, such as access to minority scholarships or even misappropriated feeling of belonging, okay? Using a genetic test to lay claim to any connection to Cherokee Nation or any tribal nation is inappropriate or wrong. But yet, ain't, ain't this what the natives do when they want us to prove we are? Oh, just take a DNA ancestry test. But yet, Cherokee Nation Secretary of State don't want y'all to do that, though, to sit here and claim that you indigenous. Child. So, sovereign tribal nations determine their requirements for membership, a genetic ancestry test is rarely involved. A history of traditions passing down crafts and skills and a sense of cultural continuity set the baseline for tribal membership. These things cannot be gained by sending your saliva to a lab, yet it hasn't gone unnoticed that people use genetic tests to validate one's Native American heritage. Child. These people know it's full of crap. <sighs> okay. Some claim that they could even identify a specific tribe still in all of Hull and uh, Hina work. They found that none of the companies disclose how they evaluate genetic information in DNA to determine ancestry. Hina said the test results are a probability and in no way definitive, even though the companies categorize their genetic tests as recreational. Hina is concerned that the public views them as a black and white science, which is not. Okay, it says, imagine using the traits of a small group of people as the baseline for an entire nationality. What's more, that reference population may vary between different companies. That explains why earlier this year, two identical twins could receive dis uh, disparate results from five different DTC test kits. These results are uncharacteristic of twins. Okay. The reference population is built on DNA that is voluntarily submitted on the DTC ancestry companies. Okay. Both Poole and Hina expressed concern regarding how the DTC ancestry companies are including Native American heritage in their algorithm despite limited data. Oh, look. Mm. When the researchers use the DNA samples to study other topics such as mental illness and migration, the tribe filed a lawsuit. They claim the researchers misused their blood samples for topics that are stigmatizing and for which they had not explicitly given permission. Hmm. Okay. So many native americans steer clear of participation leaving data for the reference population then and dtc ancestry tests questionable yeah because they're not the original people these people are highly mixed they're they're highly mixed these are mixed white people they're mestizo so whatever dna they had that was indigenous is bleached out or almost bleached out so of course they don't want to sit there and think that their dna they daddy white they come from the nutsack of a white man. <laughs> okay. Like, I mean, and who say they're not categorizing their white DNA as indigenous either. So. <sighs> Y'all, I just, I just can't with these people. There's another one. DNA tests are not an indicator of Native identity. Look, this was written back in 2018. So these people have been sitting here saying what they had to say about DNA and ancestry tests. Folks ain't just listening, though. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on. 
Because I just looked up in my archives or something. Actually, I need to do a separate video about that. I'm, I'm going to do a video separate about that. Because I'm, I'm on my messenger trying to look up. Um, trying to look up this uh, entry. Not really so much entry. But I'm trying to look up uh, that test I was telling y'all about with, with them talking about how they can't relate most of us back to Africa in the study. But they still say, oh, well, we need more people in the study, you know, but still, like, they can't put us back to Africa, though. Okay. <sighs> Senator Elizabeth Warren released DNA test results, not noting that she had a Native American in her family tree dating back six to ten generations. Okay. Warren used the results to settle an ongoing dispute between her and President Donald Trump about her native ancestry. Let me tell you something. One thing about Donald Trump, he he going to talk. He going to call it out, baby. But why do Warren results and her choice to use a DNA test matter? First and foremost, they matter to many Native American communities because DNA tests are not accurate indicators of indigenous identity and heritage. While many types of DNA tests utilizes probabilities, 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 okay, of hereditary markers, none of these are accurate enough to determine region, tribe, or family, or individual in a person's genealogy. Obviously. As well, companies conducting DNA tests have difficulty in determining Native identity due to a lack of information on the genetics of Native people. So it's like, ugh, oh my God, bro. And yeah, people want to take a DNA test to prove that we Indigenous when they already know you can't prove it. Because of these inconsistencies in testing no federally federally recognized tribe in the united states uses genetic testing as a means to determine enrollment do the people in the back hear that though because that's one thing they love to say oh well you know just take a dna session test to prove but i don't have to take nothing because they're already telling you can't use no dna session test to enroll so why would i why would I do that? Why why would I do that? Genetic testing at this at this time is not specific enough to meet any of these common requirements because it would have to link participants with specific ancestors genealogically. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that these DNA ancestry tests can't link you back to an indigenous ancestor, for instance, your great 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 grandpa, your great 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 grandma, or whoever. Like DNA ancestry tests can't link you back to those people and say, oh well. You got your DNA from this and that. Like, they can't tell you that. And they probably would never will. And yet people want to use these DNA ancestry tests to feel like they can debunk us and what we got going on. No, you can't. You can't debunk us or something that that can't be used to determine indigenous ancestry. Like, you, they are, they're telling us this. So to sit here and tell us, let me go back to what he said. Similar to Africans, that it would not give. Uh oh, what happened? Why are you freezing up on me? Oh, oh, I know why it's doing that. That's because I logged out. And yeah, hold on.
Yo, oh my god, I saved too much stuff, y'all. I really do. I'm trying to go through this messenger with it, like freaking um. Okay, so it went back to it now. But now it's like in um so the background's different, so sorry about that. I can find. I'm gonna go back to where we started. Yeah, so as soon as it loads up, it, it's gonna play. Yeah, don't send me no messages on here while I'm on. <laughs> while I'm on here. Because Facebook don't have no discretion about who's sending you messages on here. So, hold on. I'm just going to let that load up right quick. But I'm trying to find um, what I was talking about earlier. I know y'all like, okay, Yoni, you keep saying you're going to find it. I don't see it. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I also made a, a, a mean about it, too. Okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, let me see. Did it? Okay, here we go. Grandma. Yes. Their basis is to go back and ask grandma who believes she's Native American, which to me is fine, since I have a grandma who is part Native American. And guess what? When I did my DNA test, her native blood showed up. However, my grandma is not a black Native American. She's mixed and she's a runner. I don't know. The male red native. So I didn't have any Melanesian DNA, which would be an indicator of the black natives from Australasia. So with that out of the way, back to my- And the thing is like, they, Aboriginal Australians were not the only melanated people in America. Like we were already here before they even came over here. So I, I don't, anyway. Message on Instagram. A sister hit me up, a black woman. I don't know why. Oh my God. Like, I don't know what's going on with my internet. Yeah, let's restart it because it's over here freezing and and look and look who is this who is he trying to say this is this is to go back and ask grandma who believes she's native american which to me is fine since i have a grandma who was part native american i wonder if his grandma looked like that though because they always they always want to use this type of phenotype to say yeah, this is indigenous, which is nothing wrong if your grandma looked like that. But I just noticed how, like, when the part where he said, I have a grandma that is mixed with indigenous, he put this phenotype. But the one that he put beforehand to put it like, oh, well, you know, grandma say we Indian, he put like the darker skinned one. Yeah, I did put, mighty. Yeah, he put um yeah, he put her on there. But the one that he talking about, oh well, I have a grandma and she's mixing with indigenous, he put this one up on there. Hold on, I can't find it. Yeah, he put her up on there. I just noticed that, like little small things. I just noticed that. that DNA testing is a scam and is false, and that the genetic markers for the indigenous black Americans are so similar to Africans that it would not give the right results. Right. So instead, they said that they just asked grandma. Yes, their basis is to go back and ask grandma who believes she's Native American, which to me is fine, since I have a grandma who is part Native American. And guess what? When I did my DNA test, her Native blood showed up. 
However, my grandma is not a Black Native American. She's mixed, and she's a run-of-the-mill Red Native. So I didn't have any non-Asian DNA, which will be an indicator of the Black Natives from Australasia. So with that out of the way, back to my message on Instagram. A sister hit me up, a Black woman. She's half American, quarter Belizean, and a quarter Honduran. Notice I gave nationalities and ethnicities, but I highlighted firstly that she's Black, because there's a difference between race and nationalities. You have to elaborate in some cases. Her grandmother, however, was part Cherokee and part Black American or African American. So this sister did a DNA test. Within this DNA test, it brought up a number of African countries, around 84%, with the highest percentage being 40% Nigerian. But notice this. Her grandmother was part Native American, Cherokee. So here, you see 3% Native American DNA, but you also see something else. 1% Melanesia. This, based on the two migrations, would make 4%. So her grandmother was obviously telling the truth. This sister is a descendant of not only the Eurasian Native Americans, but also the Aboriginal Native Americans. Although a small percentage, she can still lay some sort of claim to being a descendant of the first Americans. But she's obviously more African than anything else, and still an African woman. So this sister's results and family background prove my video about African Americans who claim they're not African. So why don't you prove that you have these two groups of native blood or even just the Melanesian blood in large amounts if you're that confident of who you are and your background? DNA doesn't lie, but you don't believe in DNA testing. <laughs> Peace, love, and coke. Yeah, it does lie. It does lie. It's not even um, extensive to even say who comes from who. Like, I think I found it, y'all. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here it is. I found it. Okay. Took me long enough. <laughs> but I found it. Okay, I was like, oh my God. Like, I know, like, what it is. I just can't find it. But I found it. I'm downloading the PDF now. Because I don't feel like trying to read it off a of research gate. Because that's where I found it. I found it off a of, uh, research gate. So let me go. Here, uh oh, okay, okay. So, I have found it, I have found it, I have found it, y'all. It, it took me a while, but I found it, okay, okay. So, they did a study to see how quote unquote African Americans can trace a lineage to Af Africa or whatever. So um the background is the mitochondrial DNA haplotypes have become popular tools for tracing maternity ancestry and several companies offer this service to the general public. So right off the gate we already know they're talking about them genetic ancestry companies. So it says numerous studies have demonstrated that human uh, mitochondrial DNA haplotypes can be used with confidence to identify with the continent where the haplotype originated. But remember, that guy off of Fox News was saying there's no diagnostic nucleotide to say that this person come from this country and that. So just keep that in mind, though. Um, ideally, mitochondrial DNA haplotypes could be used to identify to uh can be used to identify a particular country or ethnic group from which the maternal ancestor emanated. However, the ge geographic distribution of mitochondrial DNA haplotypes is greatly influenced by the movement of both individuals and population groups. Consequently, common mitochondrial DNA haplotypes are shared among mul multiple ethnic groups. We have studied the distribution of mitochondrial DNA haplotypes among West African ethnic groups to determine how often mitochondrial DNA haplotypes can be used to reconnect uh, African, I'm sorry, Americans of African descent to a country or ethnic group of a maternal African ancestor. The nucleotide sequence of the mitochondrial DNA hypervariable segment a, a HVS-1 usually provides sufficient information to assign a particular mitochondrial DNA to the proper haplogroup, haplogroup, and it contains most of the variation that is available to distinguish a particular mitochondrial DNA haplotype from closely related haplotypes. In this study, samples of general African-American and Pacific Gullah Geechee, okay, HVS-1 haplotypes 
were compared with two databases of HBS-1 haplotypes from Sub-Saharan Africa and the incidence of perfect matches recorded for each sample. Okay, now here we go. When two independent African-American samples were analyzed, more than half of the sample abs one mitochondrial haplotypes exactly matched common haplotypes that were shared among multiple African ethnic groups. Another 40% did not match any sequence in the database, and fewer than 10% were an, ex an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group. Let me zoom in on that so y'all can say what I'm talking about. Okay. So let me repeat one more time. Okay, there was a video a while back where a brother had a German shepherd survive saliva, and this results were some sub-Saharan African tribe. Yeah, they man, these companies have been exposed for using uh, you know, consumers using their animals dna and send it over there and they're getting like human results so yeah they've been getting exposed for that too so um but yeah just but look at this though it says fewer than 14 percent of african-american mitochondrial dna sequences match sequences from only west africa or only west central africa hmm Interesting. All right, but let, let's start over though. Another 40% did not match any sequence in the database, and fewer than 10% were an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group. Differences in the regional distribution of haplotypes were observed in the African database, and the African American haplotypes were more likely to match haplotypes found in ethnic groups from West or West Central Africa than those found in Eastern or Southern Africa. Fewer than 14% of African-American mitochondrial sequences match sequences from only West Africa or only West Africa. So what is this telling you, though? What is this telling you? Let's read the conclusion, though. Our database of sub-Saharan mitochondrial DNA sequences includes the most common haplotypes that are shared among ethnic groups from multiple regions of Africa. These common haplotypes have been found in half of all sub-Saharan Africans. More than 60% of the remaining haplotypes differ from the common haplotypes at a single nucleotide position of the HBS-1 region, and they are likely to occur at varying frequencies within sub-Saharan Africa. However, the finding that 40% of the African-American mitochondrial DNA analyzed had no match in the database indicates that only a small fraction of the total number of African haplotypes has been identified. In addition, the finding that fewer than 10% of African-American mitochondrial uh, DNA match mitochondrial DNA sequences from a single African region suggests that few Africans might be able to trace their mitochondrial DNA lineages to a particular region of Africa. Even fewer will be able to trace their, their mitochondrial DNA to a single ethnic group. <laughs> Bruh. But then they're trying to save face and say, oh, however, no firm conclusion should be made until a larger database is available. It is clear, however, that when identical mitochondrial DNA haplotypes are shared among many ethnic groups, the different parts of Africa, it is impossible to determine which single ethnic group was the source of a particular maternal ancestor based on the mitochondrial DNA sequence. And mind you, let me go back. It says in the beginning, right? Hold on, let me go back in the middle, okay? When two independent African-American samples were analyzed, more than half of the sampled 
I'm sorry, HBS-1 mitochondrial DNA haplotypes exactly match common haplotypes that were shared among multiple African ethnic groups. Okay? Mind you, it said two independent African-American samples. It didn't say a group of samples. It didn't say a stack of samples. It just says two independent African-American samples. We're analyzing more than half of the sampled HBS-1 monochondral haplotypes exactly match common haplotypes that were shared among multiple African ethnic groups. But another 40% did not match any sequence in the database. 40% is a large number. Whether folks believe it or not, that that's that's a come on now. And fewer than ten percent were an exact match to a sequence from an African ethnic group. So fewer than ten percent of the people that they used, including the Gullah Geechee. We're an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group. But yet these DNA ancestry test companies telling you, oh, we can prove your, your African ancestry. We can prove your Native American ancestry. So after knowing that, what this man has to say here is irrelevant and it's not true. This sister is a descendant of not only the Eurasian Native Americans, but also the Aboriginal Native Americans. Although a small percentage, she can still lay some sort of claim to being a descendant of the first Americans. But she's obviously more African than anything else. How is she more African when they just told us that 40% of quote-unquote African Americans did not match any sequence in the database? And fewer than 10% were an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group. Uh oh. And still an African woman. So this sister's results and family background prove my video about African Americans who claim they're not African. No, it don't. It don't prove it. <laughs> it doesn't prove it. It doesn't prove it. They have already done the research to say, well, DNA ancestry test doesn't prove your ethnicity. It doesn't prove your race. It doesn't prove the origins of your people. Fewer than 14% of African-American mitochondrial DNA sequences match sequences from only West Africa or only West Central Africa. But yeah, I thought they said we all come from West Africa because West Africa is where folks were being enslaved and stuff. Y'all see how their stories ain't matching up. Mind you. In the article, it says African-American mitochondrial DNAs often, often match mitochondrial DNAs found in multiple African ethnic groups. Hmm, it does. When you just told us. If I can find it again. when you just told us that 40% did not match any sequence in the database. <laughs> so how is African-American mitochondrial DNA often match mitochondrial DNA found in multiple African ethnic groups when you just said that Fewer than 10% were an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group. Mind you, name of the article. I'm sorry, not article, but name of the study is African American mitochondrial DNAs often match mitochondrial DNAs found in multiple African ethnic groups. So literally, they debunked their own talking point. Because this is the results that they came up with. Y'all see how like... 
they try to do all these mind games and they think that using big words, we ain't going to know what they mean. Yeah, we know what it mean. We know exactly what it means. We know exactly what it is. These DNA ancestry tests are baloney and they don't prove anything. This is why it's so important to do your research. This is why it's so important to do your research. I'm trying to find. Yeah, because um, because remember, even Kimberly Tallbear said there's no DNA test to prove Native American ancestry. Y'all remember this article? There is no DNA test to prove you're Native American. This is why folks need to like, if you're going, if you're going to sit here and try to debunk people, go on the websites where they talk about science, you know, not just stuff that you see on Wikipedia and what, like, no, like, you need to go to the source. You need to go to the people that be talking about they scientists and they do this and that. Because Kim Tallbear is an anthropologist. And she says there's no DNA test to prove you're Native American. Supposedly she's Native. But supposedly she's biracial because her dad is white. But nonetheless. The people that they tell us are Native, who are actually biracial, multiracial, or mestizos, are telling us, hey, there's no DNA test to prove you're Native American. And we already know why they're probably saying that anyway. Because they know a lot of them are not the original people to begin with. So they know if they do that DNA, they, they said that the DNA, they're going to find out, hey, they ain't the original people. Like, we're not making this ish up. They did a whole study and found out that, oh, 40% of African Americans didn't match any sequence in the database of sub-Saharan Africans. That's a huge number. Okay, that's a huge number. And sit here and say, oh, fewer than 10% were an exact match to a sequence from uh, a single African ethnic group. Are you kidding me? And y'all telling us that this uh, science is so advanced, but yet these DNA accessory companies on their website saying, oh, we can prove this, that, and the third, and yet they can't because fewer than 10% can even trace their lineage to an African ethnic group. Like, who who are they trying to play? I, I think they trying to play us. I think they I think they think we dummies. They I think that they think that we weren't going to uh, question them. I think that they thought that we wasn't going to do further research. But no, we gonna look at our research. We are gonna look at these studies and see what y'all talking about. Oh, look, Ancestry Support. Look at this, Ancestry.com. Indigenous American DNA. Having Native American ancestors or Indigenous American DNA does not make someone a Native American tribal citizen. Hmm. No ish, Sherlock. No ish. Exactly, Pony Locks. They are telling us that these DNA tests are full of ish. Well, it might be old, but still, like, he over here spreading misinformation.
I don't, I don't let any type of spreading of information let go, no matter how old it is. Because the out of Africa theory is old. That that has came out what a century or two ago, and people still use the out of Africa theory to sit here and try to debunk, quote unquote, debunk our claims to our own land. So it, it don't matter how old the information is. When people try to use it against you, people try to use DNA and sexual tests against us, but yet Ancestry.com, 23andMe, Kimberly, Tall Bear, all these different people saying, well, you can't use DNA ancestry tests to prove you're Native American. <sighs> the, there are differences between a person's genetic, political, and cultural identities. Native American tribal members are citizens of their nations. So they just go on and talk about tribal enrollment. To determine tribal the citizenship, tribal nations determine the legitimacy and strength of someone's family connections. You got to trace the lineage back on the tribal citizenship roles, sometimes called a percent of blood, called blood quantum is used. They go on talking about the blood quantum. And it says claiming to be Native American because of a distant or unverifiable Native American ancestor contradicts a tribal nation's right to sovereignty. In fact, so many people falsely claim to have a Cherokee great-grandmother that it's been deemed as an uh, anthropological phenomenon. This doesn't mean that the presence of Native American ancestors is not an important feature of someone's family history. However, there's a crucial difference between the claims, I have Native American lineage and I am Native American. But yet, don't they sit there and provide DNA ancestry tests? Like, how are you going to sit here and say unverifiable Native American ancestor, but yet you turn around and say, oh, well, you know, our, our DNA ancestry test can sit here and show you where you come from and, uh, and, um, and, and, and show if you have a, a, a Native American DNA. So are you indirectly trying to say that your DNA ancestry tests are unverifiable? In part, this stems from traditional beliefs that kinship networks, family connections, not ethnicity or DNA determine who is Native American. I find this funny though. Hold on, let me let me let me turn this. Let me, cause it's like DNA is important for someone to sit here and claim ties to Indigenous American ancestry. Like you can't just sit here and say traditional beliefs and family connections determine who is Native American. Because although family connections is important, how is DNA ain't though? You still have to have a bloodline to be Indigenous. So I also see this as kind of like natives trying to cover their tracks and be like, oh, well, you know, we need y'all to believe in the culture and in the traditions because a lot of them know they ain't got no indigenous DNA. <sighs> For reasons that include tribal sovereignty, ancestry does not break down DNA results by tribe. But we do provide an approximate geological geographical region. The results are not broken down by tribe. Hmm, I wonder why. Why the indigenous America's region may not appear in your ethnicity estimate. It's possible to have Native American ancestors, but not have the indigenous America's region in your ethnicity estimate. This is because there's a difference between lineage and DNA. A child receives 50% of each parent's DNA, but they typically do not receive 50% of each parent's ethnicity. This is due to the randomness of genetic inheritance. For example, a parent with half Nigerian and half Indigenous American DNA mass may, may pass down more Nigerian DNA to their child or vice versa. Over generations, the randomness of genetic inheritance results and more DNA being passed down 
from some ethnicities and others being lost entirely. Hmm. In a way, I agree because we all know that you can, you know, pale people have been using the practice of racial whitening to wash out our ancestral uh, ties and our genetic lineage. So I do get that to a certain extent. But however, in 60 Minutes, as the guy broke it down, he was saying how you can have this type of ancestry but the ancestry test company don't pick up on it because they're using certain uh, paternal and maternal lineages to kind of break itself down. And it doesn't tell you the full scope of where everything comes from, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, <sighs> y'all the ancestry dna test surveys over 700,000 locations in your dna but there's still a chance that we missed evidence of indigenous american dna this is because you may have not inherited genetic markers that ancestry dna does not use to identify indigenous american uh ethnicity so in other words <laughs> okay, honestly, don't it sound like they know that they're purposely not using our DNA for people to compare against? Because look, it says this is because you may have inherited genetic markers that ancestry DNA does not use to identify indigenous American ethnicity. That's that's a problem to me. Because if it's indigenous ancestry, then why why ain't um, ancestry DNA using it? Additionally, some Native American communities are unrepresented in genetic uh, research, largely due to distrust in tribal communities because of centuries of extractive and exploitative research uh, practices. So, I mean, again, though. You may have inherited genetic markers that ancestry DNA does not use to identify indigenous American ethnicity. So to me, it's kind of like them admitting to like, hey, you know, yeah, you have indigenous DNA, but we don't recognize that as being indigenous or yeah, we're just going to categorize you as something else. So in a way, they kind of proving that like what we've been talking about for all this time. They purposely are doing this so we won't get our flowers. Because remember, a lot of these natives, they get their indigenous DNA from us. And others, they, they probably just get it from the Asians, the Eurasians, or the pale people. So they know what they're doing, though. Because how is it that 40% of the people who participated in the study didn't match any sequence in the database. That doesn't make any sense. So if they don't match sub-Saharan Africans, then who do, who do they match? And if only fewer than 10% were an exact match to a sequence from a single African ethnic group, then what about the other 90%? Like, you just, you can't make this ish up. You just can't. You just can't. You just can't. You just can't. <sighs> Y'all. 
Hmm. Okay. Let's look at this. Cause I came across, um, this book, right? Cause, oh, oh, Kimberly, this, this is Kimberly part. Look, Kimberly, we pulling up everywhere. She, she trying to tell folks y'all ain't going to be sitting over here claiming native Dana and don't, and don't be having your facts straight. Okay. So let, let's, let's see here. Okay. Let's see where I can start at. At any rate, there has not been widespread sampling for Native American markers of any type. In terms of ancestry by DNA tests, which Genelix and Niagen market respectively under the headers of Native American ancestry DNA testing and Native Indian heritage testing, so-called Native American markers surveyed in the tests are not also unique. I'm sorry, are yeah, are also not unique to Native Americans. To recap, while some of the genetic markers used in mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosome and DNA prints autosomal marker tests have to date been found only individuals already identified as Native American, neither natives or non-Native Americans, no matter how one uh, delineates, if I'm the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not, but anyway, uh, such samples have been since, uh, systematically sampled. We do not have an in-depth understanding based on the defensible sample size of how such markers are distributed globally. Thus, it makes little sense for genelics to speak of such markers as found uniquely in Native Americans. Given what I have said about the impossibility of determining tribe in the past or present via genetic markers, it is also not accurate for Nigen to speak of Native if, Native Indian heritage DNA testing as determining ancestry from most tribal origins. Okay. Uh, while some non-Native American test takers certainly find Native American markers in their genomes, Genelix and Niagen's language implies that so-called Native American markers are definitive of racial slash or tribal identity. Despite company claims about scientifically rigorous methods, these are not scientifically rigorous ideas. In addition, they have important political implications. Hmm, okay. So both Genelix and Nigen exaggerate what DNA tells us about ancestry and it corresponds with racial, ethnic, and tribal identity. That I said, I do not charge uh, the companies with will willfully misleading the public. Their claims demonstrate that science does not exist in a cultural vacuum. Genelix and Nigen's language reveal a idea that persists unevenly within science and without science, the genetics relates to ethnic slash tribal group identity in a deterministic uh, way. Thus, tests for genetic markers can be sold as proof of validation of that identity. So this woman has been fighting tooth and nail to tell people like, hey, you can't use these tests to prove Native American identity. Okay, and, and I want to show y'all the um the book oh this came back in 2008 interesting they've been saying this for years and this is the book revisiting race in a genomic age and look at all the people oh, oh deborah bonick hey uh oh mr rick kittles in here what rick kittles doing in here How, what is Mr. Kittles doing in here? Let me, let me go back. I want to see if Mr. Kittles in here. Rick Kittles. I want to see what he's talking about on here. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's look at this. Hold on. I'm trying to see. Oh, I think they tearing him up. Hold on. Okay. At the conclusion of his former presentation, Kittles raffled a free African ancestry test and then spoke with the 30 or so audience members who stood in the QQ that went through the aisles of the auditorium to await their turn to offer questions, comments, and compliments. 
One African American woman attired in red, white, and blue clothing adorned with rhinestone American flags in a lanyard for her ID cards and boarded with the acronym DAR, Daughters of American Revolution, introduced herself as a member of the Underground Railroad of the DAR called Daughters of Color before proceeding to ask Kittles for first, further interpretation of the genetic genealogy results she had recently received from his company. The great majority of Kittles' audience however, gathered in the lobby just outside the auditorium where the lecture had taken place. Okay, go, let's go on. Da, da, da. Hold on. Um, most merchants sat noticed ably idle, but one vendor's table was surrounded by enthusiastic customers. In the center of this crowd was African Ancestry co-founder Gina Page, who struggled to stay on top of the many orders placed for her company's testing service. Her business partner presentation, during which Kittles has stressed his shared experience with the audience, has succeeded in persuading many of the AAHDS members to purchase African Ancestry genetic testing. Okay, so um. Uh, preconditioned by the fact Rick Kittles is among the most well-known macular biologists in the United States. The authenticity of Kittles displayed at the AAHDS gathering is bolstered by a scientific authority established through press coverage, scholarly publications, and institutional uh, associations. Okay. So they just talking about um, like who he is, where he was at. Uh, da, da, da. Mm. <laughs> why, why did he put that in quotation marks? It's Kittle's hard scientific research are prominent institutional settings on the gen, uh, genetic determinants of prostate cancer. Okay. Hmm. Okay. To the soft science of genetic genealogy testing. Hmm. I wonder why. Okay. Uh... Best explained to me, she was she wants to do something with her results, like perhaps travel to Africa and see. He know what he doing with with doing that. He know exactly what he's doing with that, because of course, this dude is going to try and push that we all come from Africa because it's all about money with him. It's all about money, and of course, you know when our people take it. They're going to feel obligated to go to Africa and build up what they got going on. And they don't like them. They be calling, they be calling quote unquote African Americans that, that go to Africa white. They don't even sit here and, and call you African American or black or whatever. They, they say that we white. Okay. So they just, I don't know if they're really just going in about him. Let me see if I can find something. And let me um, scooch it back so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so hmm, this is interesting. Hmm, that's interesting. Where did it go? Because I just saw it. No. This making me angry. Trying to find what he said. Notice how they said he persuaded them to take the to get the test, though. Kittles has stressed his shared experience with the audience, has succeeded in persuading. 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 Yeah, I guess they don't really talk about him much. They're just talking about who he is and what he got going on. 
Hmm, okay, Kittles and Shiver explain the development and application of accessory informative markers, technology to personalize genetic testing. Okay, Kittles and Shiver also review potential methodological pitfalls and social risks of current technology and significantly call for the development of a code of ethics and laboratory uh, accreditation for the genetic ancestry testing industry. Because remember, Kittles claimed that after you send in the DNA, he destroys it, but who knows? Okay. Uh, he argues that clear and accurate information about the com composition of the database the statistical methods used in proper inter interpret uh, I'm sorry interpretation uh, results must be available to consumer of these tests. There are several areas in the genetic testing companies overstate the scope of precision for their services. For example, consumers are frequently led to believe that a unique Y chromosomal or mitochondrial DNA finding is fully representative of their ancestry, when in reality it represents only one ancestral line out of thousands. As a legally uh, legal scholar, Greeley's principal concern about these tests is the need for disclosure of test limitations in a consumer-driven market system. He notes that despite Kittles and Shivers' call for a code of ethics for genetic testing, no movement has been made towards its development. In addition, most common companies employ proprietary DNA databases that statistical algorithms and industry operates without regulation or standardized laboratory practices. <sighs> oh, look, it also talks about the one drop rule. But second, the most importantly and fundamental reply is that race is not a biological trait at all. It's a social classification. There is no candidate subject for genetic explanation. In some cases, this is self-evident as the category black defined by the one drop rule in the United States. More generally, this conclusion is entailed by the failure of races to con uh, constitute credible biological kinds, which I mean by this and the reasons for it should be become clearer in this chapter. Even though races are not kinds and even if race is not a biological trait, several phenotopic features strongly associated with conceptions of race are. Most obvious is skin color. Skin color is not, however, a Melidian trait. However, um, like height, the kind of continuously variable character associated with many genetic loci. So a lot of people like to say race is a social construct, but I mean, it kind of is in the way, but everything is a social construct. Literally everything that we do is a social construct. So, and I mean, like, and the pale people implement, implemented the one drop rule because they wanted to keep the wealth out of the aboriginal community. So, but I like that they call Kittles out because he they talking about code of ethics for genetic and testing, but yet they ain't made no movement towards the development though. So notice it, it talks about that though. So yeah, so I mean, but this this is this is a good book. I have to read it on my own time though. Okay, so here's another book I want to show y'all. Okay, it says Ancestry DNA. The ancestral DNA is a single person's DNA test compared with samples taken from countries or areas of the world. For example, one woman's results show that she was 38% Native American, but no other information is given. Have you heard that Native Americans receive a part of the revenue that comes from any casino of their land? Any ancestry test could be used as proof of genetic ancestry and also lead to part of the proceeds hmm interesting as citizens we are being exposed to dna as a marketing tool a foolproof test of identity fraternity or ancestry a number of companies now market genetic ancestry or genetic tests and more than five hundred thousand people have purchased them they are a number of opinions on whether this is helpful some scientists think this could be harmful or false and some see them as a way of bringing genetics to everyday life okay 
Many of these tests claim to tell co uh, customers where their lineage originate. However, this can be very confusing. We want information, but we may not understand. Pamphlets and counseling are offered, but if the news is not good, it can be dangerous. When consumers find out the information they were sent was not accurate, they may be benign to distrust genetic research. Okay. Genetic ancestry testing also has serious consequences. Test takers may reshape their identities, which we already know, and they may suffer emotional stress. Test takers may also change how they report their race. Um, most tests fall into two categories, mitochondrial DNA, test secrets, uh, a region uh, of the maternally inherited mitochondrial uh, genome. Mitochondria are small organelles any cell that control the energy within the cell powerhouse uh the genes in the mitochondria are passed along from the mother's egg without change therefore those genes can help determine motherhood okay so it just goes on to talk about that um uh so yeah so so again i mean and people want to say people are saying that we're saying that dna tests are fake not really DNA tests are fake, but people like, like to say, oh, well, y'all know y'all saying DNA is fake. I'm No one is saying DNA is fake. We know DNA is real. But however, these DNA sensory tests that they're trying to put out there, yeah, that's that's not accurate, boo. That's not accurate. And I don't know why people keep trying to push it, but nonetheless, okay, because we know DNA is real. We all know you can prove the baby daddy. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> we know that. But, um... Proving ancestry is way different from proving parentage. And I think people forget that, though. Let me read what y'all got going on, though. The human genome is too complex to reap any conclusive results by comparing your DNA with other people alive today. Ideally, if we could, ex act, I'm sorry, excavate Indian burial grounds and take samples from the bones therein, we might have, get a clearer genetic picture. DNA changes too fast with each, each generation. What the thing is, I ain't nobody about to go dig up no Indian burial ground. Like, if you touching them remains, you gonna get cursed. And not cursed out, like cursed, cursed, okay? I don't know if y'all ever watch a haunting but this pale man talked about how he brought this house and um yeah he bought a house and he was uh you know doing renovations in the basement and he dug up an indian barrel ground bro and let me tell y'all something them spirits got there attacking that pale man he got to see him them wild coyotes and wolves jumping in his bed mm -hmm. <laughs> it was coming after him they were not playing with that pale man. They was like, you have to disturb my slumber. I'm coming for you. They were not, he was not prepared. I I wouldn't be prepared. If I dug up an Indian bear ground by accident, I would just start, I don't know, I would just cry. And I would just start telling them like, I, I, I did not do this on purpose. I'm so sorry. Like, I wouldn't, I don't know how to even resolve the situation. I, I would just be too distraught because I know once you mess with what they got going on like it, it's 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 free game after that they they coming i'm not risking my life for that and that's exactly why them europeans ain't do it either <laughs> yo like they be trying but they know they gonna get messed up that's funny <laughs> oh my god hmm I'm sorry. <laughs> it was funny. I I just can't. I just can't imagine like accidentally or even purposely digging up an ancient Indian burial ground. Like you, you just gonna die. You are going to die. Not you going to prison. No, you going under the ground. You're gonna get buried. Like child, you you going to die. Okay, you're gonna get deleted. <laughs> to keep it PG, they going the ancestors coming to delete you. <laughs> but anyway, let me let me continue all with this so I can get off here. 
because I, I I plan on getting off of here in the next 10 minutes, but nonetheless. <laughs> okay. Can you take a DNA test for Native American ancestry? Okay. Mind you, this is on DNA testing So I'm not, I'm, I'm not using, um, you know, just other sources like because we got to look at the books we got to look at the anthropologists we got to look at what the scientists are saying we have to look at what these dna and sensory test companies are saying we got to look at what dna uh websites are saying as well like so many people are coming out talking about this stuff okay so i just i hate it when the information is there and people want to pick and choose, like, oh, well, you know, I've decided that, like, the information is there, like, the science is there, like, even and the scientists are saying, hey, we can't do this, even though the companies are saying that they can, the science ain't advanced like that. And I, th I don't think it's not so much as the science not being advanced, they just know that, like, Ancestry, uh, like, Ancestry.com is saying, they just said you may have inherited genetic markers that DNA, uh, I'm sorry, ancestry DNA does not use to identify indigenous American ethnicity. So if you have indigenous DNA and they're not using it as a marker of um, indigenous American DNA, then what does that tell you? Because that kind of lets me know like, okay, well, we can see why you are purposely labeling many of us as african when in fact a study has been done to show that 40 percent of us can't even be traced over there to begin with okay 40 percent did not match any sequence in the database from the haplotypes of sub-saharan africa so but yet that's where they claim that we come from though So we, we got to have somebody DNA. If it ain't Africans, who? Like, make it make sense. But anyway, let me go back to where I was at. So anyway, um, it says there are several commercial ancestry tests that list Native American as an ethnicity category. They test for, however, direct to consumer ancestry tests may be less reliable when it comes to determining Native DNA than you might expect. There is no Pacific Native American ancestry test, and each company uses different reference populations with different genetic markers for their tests. Okay, and not only that, but remember when Homeboy was saying how. Uh, Okay, hold on. Let me let me let me play what he said again. And she's a run of the mill red native, so I didn't have any Melanesian DNA, which would be an indicator of the black natives from Australasia. Okay. So he's talking about the quote unquote Asian. Uh, when he say Melanesians, it's from Australasia. Australasia. Okay. So, we already know that ancient Australasians were already here. We already know that they were here, and some would even argue that they're our sibling group. Okay, so if we know that they have been here, ancestry DNA aren't going to count them as indigenous. So how can we use a DNA ancestry test to say, oh, well, you know, yeah, you know, Australasians, you know, they were indigenous to America, so on and so forth, if DNA ancestry test companies don't see it that way. And who's to say that they're not being biased about how much DNA we have from them to begin with? Because they are already saying, like, you know, hey, you can have indigenous DNA, but we may, we may, well, we probably don't use it to identify indigenous American ethnicity, though. They're not using uh, Australian or Melanesian DNA to identify indigenous American ethnicity. So come on, like, make, make it make sense. 
why DNA ancestry tests may be less reliable for Native American ancestry, okay? So when an ancestry DNA test lists Native American as a category, this category is generally very broad. Often it includes Native peoples from all over the Americas and mostly from South or Central America. There are not many people of North American Native ancestry in DNA databases since Native people residing in the United States may be distrustful of private genetic companies. But yet again, these people are mostly mixed. They're mixed white people. They come from the nutsack of a white man. They come from a womb of a white woman. And, me, and let's be honest, many of these so-called Natives are labeled as white or have been labeled as white. So... How are you going to put white people DNA as? Like, anyway, the practical implication of this is that there are not enough people of Native American ancestry from the United States and ancestry databases to create a reference population. While some tests may distinguish between Native peoples from North America and South and Central populations, they are unable to distinguish tribes, between tribes. Okay, not only that, but they they were, um, I don't want to say they were wiping out tribes, but they were selling a lot of indigenous tribes off into enslavement. They were holding indigenous people as prisoners as war and reclassifying um, our ancestors as black, colored, Negro, etc. So again, how are you going to distinguish between tribes when you are putting these tribes off as Negro, colored? Africanizing them, classifying them in with the Africans. Like, come on now. <sighs> As a result of colonism, intermarriage, and intermingling, it is also likely that DNA of enrolled tribe members would not be exclusively native. Oh, what did I just say? What did I just say? Oh, how did who run for? Good motherfuckers. <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just say? What did I just say? I just said it. Didn't I just say it? Didn't I just say it even before reading it? I've been saying this how many times throughout the video? And and look, and, and they said it. They said the exact same thing that I've been saying this whole time. This came out 2018, child. How many times have I said it? How many times did I say these are mixed white people? How many times? How many times? Okay, and I didn't even read this part before I even said that. I didn't even read that part. So for them to even mention it, I'm like, Whoa, for them to be honest like this, yo, on DNA testing toys.com, like, bro, oh my God. As a result of colonism, intermarriage, and intermingling, it is also likely that the DNA of enrolled tribe members would not be exclusively native, since they would have also European, African, and Asian ancestry. For instance, when the members of the uh, see Konoke, I'm sorry for not pronouncing that right. Wampanoag tribe. Oh, they trying to sit there and say they African and European. Okay. So they trying to sit here and say Wampanoag tribe in Massachusetts had their DNA tested and it was found that they also carried European and African ancestry. And we already know Wampanoag nation is, uh, our, our Wampanoag nation is one of the nations, one of the few nations that came across uh, European contact in the earliest times. So I think it's kind of funny for them to sit here and single out Wampanoag tribe, but they ain't singling out Cherokee tribe, though. They ain't talking about Cherokee tribe was, uh, you know, bleached out and how they were adopting pale people into the tribe, though. I, I think that's very interesting that they chose to talk about the Wampanoag nation. I think that's very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. 
And it's not so much that I don't believe it because I'm pretty sure there is some admixture in there. But like for them, for this person to sit here and single out Wampanoag tribe and not even mention Cherokee, it's like, like, you know what you're doing, though. Like, I, 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 I peep game when I see it. So I see you, girl. I see you. Okay, so types of DNA accessory tests. Child, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna get in this. And it goes back in the haplo groups. Okay, as we all have mitochondrial DNA, both women and men can take maternal accessory tests. Mitochondrial DNA doesn't mutate often, so the mutations that we have can be used to trace the migrations of our maternal ancestors out of and within Africa child i know she ain't trying to push this out of africa theory she is trying to push this out of africa theory 23 meat maternal haplogroup map child they are still falling out of africa theory after it been debunked all this time Child, what? They using DNA fingerprint tests. What? Short tandem repeats, sections of your DNA that repeat themselves in a unique and identifiable pattern. Some STRs have been identified as belonging to global populations. However, STR ancestry tests Reveal very limited information. Typically, these tests will only reveal what percentage African, Asian, and European, etc. you are, without narrowing down to specific countries or regions. Hmm, interesting. So it talks about the companies that mentioned Native American ancestry. And we already know you can't use a DNA session test to enroll into a tribe. You gotta do your DNA session test. So yeah, I, I just, I think it's funny, though. I really think it's funny, because for those that don't know about Wampanoag, let's see. Yeah. So we already know they're trying to push them off as African. They, they've been doing it for a long time. But these are the original people, though. So I just think it's very interesting how they're trying to put it as, oh, well, you know, they're African and European, too. Are they? Are they? Because I can see if they got it, with intermarriage and mixing and stuff like that, but I don't know. Let's let's hop in Cherokee Nation though. You gonna sit here and tell me that this woman Cherokee? Is that this man Cherokee too? When it's obvious that they're mixed. Hmm, interesting. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Are y'all familiar with um, Access Genealogy? Y'all know about them? So I just came back, came across Access Genealogy website. And look, it says the Cherokees tested had high levels of DNA markers associated with the Berbers, Native Egyptians, Turks, Lebanese, Hebrews, and Mesopotamians genetically 
they are more Jewish than typical American Jew of European ancestry. So-called full-blooded Cherokees had high levels of European DNA and the trace of Asiatic Native American DNA. Some card-carrying Cherokees had almost no uh, Asiatic DNA. The European DNA contained a much higher level of DNA test markers associated with the Iberian Peninsula that was typic uh, typical of Caucasian Americans. So I wonder why she didn't put that in the article. But she chose to single out the Wampanoag, though. That's interesting. That's interesting. But yeah, that's what that's what they do, though. That's what they do. Let me zoom in in case y'all can't see. So, but yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all get, y'all get the point. Y'all get the point. Cause we, we know a lot of these so-called natives are mixed with white. We know they mix white people. So how, how are you going to use our DNA to say, oh, well, if you don't, have this mixed white people DNA, then you're not indigenous. Child gone somewhere. Child gone somewhere. Okay. But y'all, I mean, I just hope more people realize what's going on though. Because one thing that people like to do with DNA ancestry tests is spread misinformation about how it can prove your ancestry and it does not. Y'all, you just can't make this ish up. You just can't. You just can't. Let me see what y'all saying. They seem to be the actual people who dress up as Knickerbockers, Dutch, and the Portuguese. Are you talking about Cherokee? Did you know we make up 80 to 90% of the population? That's why immigrants and mainstream always promote to us and they get sell us to tell us over and over again. So it's the, yeah. Because for the longest, it said that um, our population has been like this number, like for decades. And of course they are, um, you know, uh, group grouping the Africans in with us. child so yeah y'all have to be very careful with these um oh look at this look at this y'all look at this I know I'm saying, look at this. And y'all like, okay, you want to show it to me. Damn. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me, I'm trying to find the thing. Okay. So this is another book. Let me zoom in right quick. Okay. It's called A Brief History of Everyone Who Ever Lived. Something like that. Um, it says it's important to remember that commercial DNA sessions don't necessarily show your geographical origins in the past. They show you 
with whom you have common ancestry today. I have a few chunks of DNA that 23 me. So this person just talked about their ancestry. But yeah, that is true. Like they just showing you who, you know, who you have common ancestry with today, though. But it doesn't mean that you come from them or even vice versa. Yeah, so there, there's there's many books, there's many sources out here that's talking about this. And this is why it's important for people to do their own research. I mean, yeah, people don't have to believe me either. Because I know someone's probably watching this video like, oh, this is a bunch of honky-donk. Like, and you can always do your own research. You can always look more into Kimberly Tall Bear. You can always... um look more into this stuff but the thing is the problem is people are not doing their research and then when someone does the research and they saying hey well this ain't right then they then that's when they want to be like oh we'll prove it prove it like you should have won you should have been the one that's been proving this it shouldn't have took me to do my research and you come on over here talking about it don't mean nothing it, it means everything It means everything. Like, you can't sit here and say, oh, well, you know, take a DNA search test when you have not done your research on them to begin with. And then when someone comes up with the truth about it, then it's like, oh, well, show me this down the third. Like, no. Because why, why wasn't you doing the research? And that's, that's a, a problem I have with a lot of people. They only want to sit here and say they have a problem with something when it goes against what they were thought to believe. Like, there's no reason why folks ain't doing any research on this stuff. No reason why. And Angel, this Angel dude, I don't know much about him, but um, he, he should have been doing more research instead of talking his, his mess. Because what a lot of people do, they don't listen to comprehend. They listen to respond. And you can't help someone who just want to listen to respond. Because I know there's some people out there that be spreading misinformation about Aboriginal Americans. But nonetheless, um, you still got to do your research, though. You still got to do your research. You can't just rely on one source to tell you what it is and what it ain't. Like, I don't, I don't get how let me see if I can pull up, um, that thing again that I showed y'all from Science Magazine the other day. So I want to show y'all what it was talking about too. Okay. Cause I know I, I wasn't um I wasn't saying I was like in a rush, but I just had a lot to cover in that video and I didn't feel like showing the other part. But this was this was the um thing I showed y'all the other uh day. And I reference I reference this article a lot. Because look at me, the scientists and anthropologists like come out and talk about it. Look, Deborah A. Balnick and Kimberly Tarbeer, Alondra Nelson. Those was the same people from that book I just showed y'all. Look, Revisiting Race in the Genomic Age. Look, Alondra Nelson, Kimberly Tarbeer. Deborah Balnick, like these people have been saying this for a long time. And their message have been consistent. So anyway, I, I read I read about this, what, 
the other day, but I want to share this again. I'm going to share a particular, um, a particular part. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. So it says another problem is that the questionable scientific assumptions are sometimes made when companies report results of a genetic ancestry test. For instance, when an ally or haplotype is most common in one population, companies often assume it, it is to be a uh, diagnostic of that population. This can be problematic because high genetic diversity exists within populations and gene flow occurs between populations. Very few allies are therefore diagnostic and membership in a specific population. But companies sometimes fail to mention that an ally could have been inherited from a population in which it is less common. Consequently, many uh, consumers do not realize that the tests are prob probabilistic and can reach incorrect conclusions, aka they're basing this off on pop possibilities, okay? Now, let's look at the term probabilistic, okay? Oh, look at that. Based on or adapted to a theory of probability sub subject to or evolving chance variation. Hmm, interesting. This goes to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Of or relating to probabilism. Of relating to or based on probability. Okay, looks like a probability right quick. The chance that a given event will occur. Hmm, okay. The ratio of the number of outcomes in an exhaustive set of equally likely outcomes that produce a given event to the total number of possible outcomes. So to me, it's kind of feeling like they're basing things that are yet to come or not realistic or not in motion. That's what it's telling me. A logical relation between statements such that evidence confirming one confirms the other to some degree. Hmm, interesting. Quality or state of being probable. What's probable? Let's look at probable. Supported by evidence strong enough to establish presumption, but not proof. Oh. That's interesting. What we are actually witnessing is the true definition of a black identity extremist. Yeah, I agree. Because because even though our uh, a lot of our elders didn't really agree with being called black, they would rather have been called black than African American, though. But nonetheless, a lot of our um, elders, I know my elder, she didn't really call herself black. Ne neither of them did. I never heard them say we black people. But I did hear them talk about being Indian, though. I'm noticing every day the whole way of life they set up for us to live is BS, mostly lies with small truth. Yeah. Yeah, language, words, and mythology hides a lot. Yeah, it does. It really does. And that's why we have to look up the words and what they mean. Because, you know, of course, look, synonyms, believable, credible, credible. I'm sorry, credible, creditable, likely, plausible, presumptive. Hmm. Presumptive? Based on a probability or presumption. Hmm. An attitude or belief dictated by probability, assumption. The ground, reason, or evidence leading to probability to a belief. Also, we believe it now. It's not no truth, not no proof, but belief, though. Interesting.
do y'all see why it's it's important to look up the words though i'm gonna go back to this other word i wanted to look at probabilism okay a theory that in disputed more questions any solidary probable course may be followed even through an opposed course is or appears more probable. Hmm. A theory that certainty is impossible, especially in the sciences and that probability suffices to govern belief in action. Huh. Hmm. So would it be safe to say to call these uh, DNA test companies a probabilist? Let's look at probabilist though. Let's look at that. Oh, it don't really tell us much about that. Let's see if I can look at it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, your dictionary. Let's look at that. Someone who studies probability, a particular branch of mathematics, a follower of probabilism. A follower of probabilism. Hmm. So I guess we can call the DNA ancestry test companies probabilist. Probabilist. Okay and can reach incorrect conclusions, okay? Consumers often purchase these tests to learn about their race or ethnicity, but there is no clear-cut connection between an individual's DNA and his or her racial or ethnic affiliation. Worldwide patterns of human genetic diversity are weakly correlated with racial and ethnic categories because both are partially correlate, correlated with ge uh, geography. Current understandings of race and ethnicity reflect more than genetic relatedness though having been defined in particular socio-historical context european and american colonialism in addition social relationships and life experiences can have been as important as biological ancestry in shaping individual identity and group membership many genetic ancestry test companies also claim to tell consumers where their ancestral lineage originated and the social group to which their ancestors belong. However, present day patterns of residents are rarely identical to what existed in the past, and social groups have changed over time in name and composition. Databases of present day samples may therefore provide false leads. So they're saying that resident, uh, patterns of residents are really identical to what existed in the past. So meaning that it could something, it could be totally different now. It could be totally different. But maybe in that category, right? But it's different though. And because they don't have no clear cut distinction, it's not like they can really link you to that because it's not the same from the past. So if it's not the same from the past, then what does that mean for these DNA ancestry tests? So if it's not the same for the past, then that means most likely they're going to link you to somewhere else when really your DNA could have evolved from who you come from in the past. Okay. Finally, even though there is little evidence that four biologically discrete groups of humans ever existed, the ancestry by DNA test creates the appearance of genetically distinct populations by relying on ancestry informative markers, AIMs, our NSPs or other markers that show relatively large 30 to 50 percent frequency differences between population samples. Okay, so it goes on to talk more about uh, ancestry.com. Okay, so furthermore, some of the most informative AIMs involve loci that have undergone strong selection, which makes it unclear 
whether these markers indicate shared ancestry or parallel selective pressures, just such as similar environmental exposures in different geographic regions or both. Okay. Oh, hold on. I don't, hold on. Why is this saying the same thing? Okay. Oh, look at this. The problems described here are likely responsible for the most paradoxical results for this test. For instance, ancestry by DNA tests suggest that most people from the Middle East, India, and Mediterranean region of Europe have Native American ancestry. Because no archaeological, genetic, or historical evidence supports this suggestion, the test probably considers some markers to be diagnostic of Native American ancestry when, in fact, they are not. I want to point this out too, and then I'm going to get off of here. Okay. So next paragraph. Thus, these tests should not be seen as determining the race or ethnicity of a test taker. They cannot pinpoint the place of origin or social affiliation of even one ancestor with exact certainty. Although wider sampling and technology advancements may help, many of these test problems will remain. So what are they saying? You can't use DNA and session tests to prove your origins. That's what it's saying. That's what they're saying. You can't prove your origins with a DNA and session test. So I, I I don't know I don't know what to tell people I don't I don't know what to tell them like the information is there the science has been saying it people just choose to ignore it like Angel he's choosing to ignore this information but nonetheless I I just I, I just I just can't with folks the over here being a uh, probabilist and, sh- and stuff. I'm almost made me cuss. <laughs> okay. I don't want her. No, I, actually, let's make this a thing. Let's start calling people who want to force us to take DNA sensory tests. Let's start calling them probabilists. Okay. They're probabilists now. Oh, what? You want me to take a DNA sensory test? Oh, okay. You're a probabilist. Probabilist. Yeah, that's what you are. Probabilist. Probabilist. Okay, you are probabilist. Take a DNA sensor test. Well, I'm not a probabilist, so I'm sorry I, I, I don't get involved in your theories. Probabilist? What are you talking about? Well, DNA sensory tests determine your this uh, uh, ethnicity, your race, based on probabilities. Probabilities are not definitive they're not accurate and they're not um what's the word how can i put it they're not um they don't stick probability is not the same thing as certainty it's not the same as being a hundred percent sure or even proof that's not the same and even even said theory in here probabilism a theory that in disputed more questions any solidary i'm sorry solidity solidly solidly probable course may be followed even through in a post course is or appears more probable okay a theory that certainty is impossible especially in the sciences and that probability suffices to govern belief and action. I don't use probability to suffice to govern belief and action. I, I don't, I don't do that. So if you, one of those people screaming DNA sensor says you're a probabilist. Yeah, that's exactly what you are. <laughs> you said religious fanatics. Yeah. 
yeah, y'all, y'all out here talking about using theories to prove, like, no, you are a probabilist child. No, we ain't doing that with you. Let's also look at the term theory, too, because a lot of people like to use theories to sit here and say, oh, well, you know, this, that, and the third. Like, look, a plausible or scientifically acceptable general principle or body of principles offering, offer to explain phenomena. So it's plausible, scientifically acceptable, a belief policy or procedure proposed or followed as a basis for action. A hypothesis assumed for the sake of an argument or investigation. An unimproved assumption. Conjecture. So y'all here being theorists, probabilists, all of that stuff. For what? Something that can't even prove your racial origins. Theories are not truth, y'all. It's not, it's not a truth. Appearing worthy of belief, plausible, superficially pleasing or persuasive, superficially fair, reasonable, or valuable, but often uh, specious. Mm, look at this word. Specious. Specious. Having a false look of truth or a genuineness. But yet they link this to plausible? And plausible is linked to theory? This is why words so important. That's why you got to research these words. Because they're they going to use all these words, but um, we got to look at what these words mean. You can't just look speculation, an assumption of unusual business risk in hopes of attaining a commensurate gain, a transaction involving such speculation. Child, we don't got time. I'm not, I'm not finna deal with no probabilist okay <laughs> that's exactly what y'all are for the people that be coming to y'all talking about take a dna and census test for the people that be coming out talking about you have to prove your indigenous american ancestry with dna and census test just sit here and say nah i'm not a probabilist like you okay i need a cold hard truth i need data i need sources we we don't do theories over here we don't do theories. We don't do no probabilities. Oh, I don't want no probabilities. I want truth. I want hardcore data. I want solid data. I want the facts. I want the truth. Okay. Let's look at facts right quick. Okay. Something that has actual existence, an actual occurrence, a piece of information presented as having objective reality. Hmm. The quality of being actual, a thing done such as crime, action, feat. What's actuality? Let's look into actuality. The quality or state of being actual. Something that is actual. Now, we know reality can go a different way because everybody lives a different reality. And we can see people with mental illnesses. <laughs> they will hear, talking about, oh, it's, it's raining purple rabbits. <laughs> so we, we know reality can go different ways. Okay, but actual means existing in fact or reality, not false or apparent, used for emphasis, existing or occurring at the time, obsolete, active. So, we've got to look at the words. 
It's all about wordplay. It's all about wordplay, but that's all I have to say for now. Like, hopefully people get the point because, yeah, I mean, I'll use how many sources I went over talking about how you can't use Native American ancestry test. I'm sorry, not Native American ancestry, DNA ancestry test to prove your ethnicity or race. You can't even prove it to say what, what, uh, you can't even use it to even prove your origins. So, I mean, but hey, people would know this if they did their research. And it takes nothing to research. Like, Google is a search engine for a reason. It, it takes you to different sources. You can look at the books. You can look at the data. You can look up the scientists. Like, the information is there. Wikipedia is not a reliable source. So you got the Science Daily talking about this, okay? Of course, DNA and session test companies talking about these tests. Of course, you know, we got to look at what they saying because they the one that's selling the product and want us to use our money to uh, to use it or whatever. Then they got new scientists talking about it. Like all these reputable um, sources, all these sites are, are talking about how DNA and session tests can't prove who you are, what you are, where you come from, who you come from, what your origins are. Like they're putting it out there and folks are just choosing to not pay attention. But honestly, it's a personal problem because the research I've been out here for that long. I mean, in that book with, Do with Deborah Bolnick and Kimberly Tallbear, they came out with that in 2008. 2008. They've been saying that. <laughs> Y'all, but anyway, I'm going to go make some more coffee. I, I, I just, I don't know. But yeah, this is going to be my last live for a while. Um, So I won't do any lives for a hot minute but i will be uploading some uh videos and i, I do want to talk about this uh quote-unquote native american tribe uh being caught up for being fraudulent and doing fraudulent stuff so i will make a video about that and i'll probably release it later on this week so definitely stay tuned for that and um and don't forget y'all if you're new to the channel you know welcome don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button all notifications to get notified when i go live and when i upload a new video don't forget to hit the like button y'all hit the like button and share this video so thank y'all guys for watching and also thank y'all uh for the super chat thank y'all for that super i mean i'm sorry not super for that generous uh super chat like that 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 really made my night so Thank y'all guys. Thank y'all guys so much for watching and until the next time. Bye.